From Toronto to Tokyo, and from Thonia to Syrinx, this is The Basement, your companion to the Ready Player One novel. Join our hosts each episode for complete chapter breakdowns and deep dives into the pop culture references through a series of challenges and homework assignments. The Basement is the Ready Player One podcast for people who love things. And now, please welcome Albert and the rest of the Gunchers for this week's episode. Hello and welcome fellow Gunters to part two of episode 0003, Surely You Must Be Joking. Uh, my name is Albert Padilla, I am the host of The Basement Podcast and the host for this evening's show, uh, and boy do we have a show for you. Um, joining me tonight are two people uh, who shouldn't be strangers to you guys if you heard part one of episode three. First up is, and I keep calling him this, the Dark Lord of Podcasting, I don't know where that came from Mike, So, um, but he's also a subject matter expert on all things in Dorian. Uh, please welcome Mike Rondo to the show. <laughs> uh, it's great to be back. Uh, yeah. I'm looking I forward got to that it. one in. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward this is to gonna this. going to be a good one. Yeah. 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 Especially when we get to the Ewoks. <laughs> this is go- I can't wait. Um, and, um, also a part of the uh, episode three team, uh, wouldn't be complete without our third member. He's the host of bad gamers anonymous. And if it was the 70s sitcom, it would be called welcome back Crowley. Please welcome back Mr. Crowley. Which one of you is John Travolta? That's the only question. I'm Warshak. I'm, Warsh- I'm Washington, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Washington right. guy. He was, all, he was the uh, chick magnet. Uh, yeah. Well, you. thanks for having me on again. I, I, I'm uh, I'm happy to be here and looking forward to uh, learning all the things from our Endorian masters. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. I, you know what, Albert? I got to say something because maybe the audience is a little lost on something. This is a bit of a podcasting secret yeah, that's true. Be- because the way you mark the episodes is based on the book however in itunes they don't want you to start at zero so we had zero 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 did i say four zeros uh, yeah uh, there was four zeros for, yeah. for technically episode one but i had to label it episode one so every time i go to do these like when i edit the show and then i go to put the you know the the file name i can yeah. have to go back and look at things because <laughs> i keep screwing up the, the thing i think i had episode two is three last week or whatever the hell we did I was all messed up. So if you're a little confused on the numbering, blame Apple and iTunes. Not, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, this is a Steve's job problem, not mine. Exactly. Not well. Steve's kind of busy being somewhere else. Rest but, his soul. Yeah. Rest yeah. His soul. But anyway, <laughs> let's get on with the show, sir. <laughs> all right. Um, now, just before we jump into this, so originally chapter three was going to be two parts, uh, but given the amount of content, I just thought it would be best to, if we went ahead and uh, decompose it just a little bit further. So this show is actually going to be. Uh, part two of three shows that will cover the entire chapter three. So uh, I won't get ahead of myself and say that Mike and Crowley will be back for episode three, um, but that would be cool. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear and see how that goes. Um, So let's get into just, I do actually have two things in news um, and we'll make these pretty quick, but um, Ready Player One, uh, since we last came on the air, has officially been announced for uh, their, it's digital and home release. So July 3rd, is when we will get the uh, digital release for it. And then July 24th, it's coming to Blu-ray and 4K. And there's a lot of different variants. I mean, they've got everything from the Steelbooks coming out to Best Buy's got their own. Um, I think Target had their own. Walmart had something in there. FH or FYE is the other one. They've got a version coming out. And they've actually uh, just, I'm going to probably pick up the one, at least from FYE. I, I don't even know if that's right. I've never even heard of this company, to be honest. But anyways, They've got a uh, the the soundtrack coming out on cassette tape, so I've already pre ordered that. Um, they've also got a record. They've got the they've got it on vinyl coming out. Uh, but there's a lot of these like throwback kind of uh, '80s uh, versions and stuff that are coming out. But have you guys uh, any interest here for either of you? Are you guys going to pre order this stuff or buy it or wait for it on HBO or whatever whenever it finally comes out? Well, I'll say this: it uh, solo will probably be out next week on home video. So. Um, oh, you know, man. Uh, um, I, I will say this, I will buy this before I buy that. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. actually I'll be getting on the, what I do is I typically now, yeah, you know, you people like your, you know, your cassette players and your vinyl and everything, but I'm a very digital kind of guy. 
I don't like carrying things or having a large bulk of things in my house. So I just, uh, I get the on-demand digital thing and, and that's the way I've been rolling for probably a couple of years now. So yeah, it's just very strange for when you go from like when you're in your early adult life, like in my twenties when I had all these DVDs and even like CDs and all that when I was younger, but now I have like none of that. It's the weirdest thing. And even my books, I have all the, the audio books now. I don't really have, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. But anyway, more of a digital guy. Yes. Crowley, how about you? You, you going to pick any of this stuff up? Yeah, I think I think I will actually. I, I looked at the, some of the posts that you put in the Discord, and uh, I started looking around, and I haven't seen the movie yet, so I'm really looking forward to to the release. So yeah, I'll pick it up. And I'm the opposite of Mike, even though he and I are the same age. I like having like I I'm still a child of of the '80s. I, I like to have that tangible thing in my hand. I thought you I weren't like a nostalgia cool kind of guy. Things. I thought you weren't big on nostalgia, but here you are. You know, <laughs> well, I don't know if that's actually nostalgia or if that's just I like that, that the feel of having He's something a tactile tangible. guy. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. And I like to, you know, collect all the cool stuff. So, yeah, I want to I want to have all the cool things that I can You, you want yeah. something to have the dust settle on. That's all. That's so it's cool. That's a good way to put yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Dust collectors. Hmm. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, I think I posted a couple of things on our social media pages for the basement. Um, but there's it, plenty of it's out there. So take a look at it. I'm pretty excited about it. And we'll probably touch on this, um, at some point. And we're kind of playing with the idea of doing a, something with the movie, um, that's kind of, that runs in parallel with this, this show. So more to come there. Uh, and then the other second bit, bit of news that we got was Warner brothers has launched a new ready player one Easter egg contest via Facebook. So if you go out to the official Ready Player One Facebook page or you visit readyplayer1hunt.com, um, essentially what it's, it's, it's kind of a little game that leads up to the releases, both digital and home release. Uh, but they've hidden these like seven videos out there across seven different Facebook pages. And they're all Warner Brother, you know, pages, right? The, they've, they've already kind of made it clear that, well, they haven't made it clear, but if you do, you know what's, going, what's happening here. They're trying to promote their other movies and, and um markets and medias and that kind of thing. So they, uh, but they've got these seven videos at the end of the video, they give you a secret word. And then you go to this website after you put in all your information, your email address, and so, you know, agree to get all their spam. Uh, you put in the secret word and they, you know, you have a chance to win TVs and visors and, uh, Blu-ray copies and variations thereof, of all of that stuff. So have you guys, either one of you had a, uh, seen this or signed up for it? Are you playing this thing? Uh, I saw you post something on it, but I didn't sign up or anything like that. I might take a look at it. I did. I just do you normally did, do these things though, like the promo stuff when when uh, no, the big companies do this. No, I don't cater to big companies, man. I'm my own man. I don't do those things. Come oh, on, but okay. uh, no, I'm I'm curious because I like what like Ernie Klein did these kinds of things. I think he did it with the book or something. And then yeah, like he you did said, it with the novel. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm I'd I'd be curious to do it. I just got. I know you posted it. I just I saw you post it. I saw it on. I think even on Facebook, I saw the Ready Player One thing there, and I, I just haven't had a chance to click on it. But I will, I will probably try it. Yeah, uh, Crowley, are you a sucker for marketing campaigns like this? Yeah, it depends on the marketing campaign. Anything Star Trek, anything Star Wars, usually. Yeah, I haven't seen not this. These one. Days. I, I saw the <laughs> right. I saw the post that you uh, that, that that was. Uh, I think you posted it on one of your social media things, and I just I haven't done it yet. Like I don't know. Maybe I get so much spam anymore, man. I don't know. I, here's my question, though. Wouldn't it make sense if this contest had like a, a VR unit that they were giving away, whether it yeah, was like an HTC Vive or right. something? Right. So they do. They have a VR. They have some VR glasses that they're giving away, but there's no unit. In fact, one of our uh, followers, I, I don't know if she listens to the show, but she definitely follows the social media pages. Her name's Lori Gunter, Lori the Gunter. She she posted in there like, this sucks. I don't even have a I don't even have a computer. Like, what if I win? the? Because one of them, I think it is. You win the glasses. Great. Now what? You don't have anything to play them on. Well, doesn't he do something, Ernie? Like he goes to like, um, is it Oculus or Riff? One of those where the, they do the VR thing and he kind of, he speaks to people all the time there. So I heard that or read that somewhere. I don't know where the hell that was, but you would think that. I don't really follow Ernest the, Klein very closely. Oh, oh no, no. Know. Really? Because uh, yeah, I thought, so. I thought you were his <laughs> autobiographer, to be honest. No, no. Um, You've got me mixed up with someone else. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. It must have been the host that we used to have on this show. I don't know who he, <laughs> but uh, anyway, maybe there's a uh, body snatcher for Albert or something. I don't know, but. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, so the first, so this contest just came out. I mean, it's, this is. Uh, we're what, June 2nd today and they've only done the very first one. So only one of the videos is out. 
again, there's a total of seven and there's like one bonus one. They haven't really um, said how they're going to convey or release that one or if you got to go find it on your own. But uh, I thought I would just go ahead and give you guys the very first password. So if you're playing the game, you want to go find it yourself and you don't really want to know uh, what the first password is, just cover your ears, mute this thing because I'm going to tell it right now. The first password, and the password is Mogwai. So if you go to the website, fill out your information, it'll ask for the secret word, put that in there, hit send, and you've got one of potentially eight uh, chances to win some of these prizes. So have fun. It looks, it's, it's kind of fun. I don't mind. And the videos are kind of cool, but Again, if you've seen the movie, you kind of have a pretty clear path in terms of where you can probably find the other seven uh, Easter egg videos that they've hidden in Facebook. So with that, um, I think we'll get into the show. Let's just jump into this because we've got a lot of Star Wars talk. We've got a lot of uh, uh, we've got airplane to cover and we're going to end with Howard the Duck, which is oh, I've just been waiting for Howard the Duck. I don't know about you guys haven't slept in days. <laughs> um, super excited <laughs> about it. Well, but I let's know one do- thing that's. That's a better movie than The Last Jedi. Yeah. Well, you're going to you're going to get your chance here in a minute. Just yeah. he's he's down there, boy. Hold on. Hold on. Battle, right, Battle so. of Endor is better than The Last Jedi. <laughs> okay, let's just get oh, them all out. Let's we'll not go let's not go crazy. Uh, yeah, let's not get nuts here. So, uh, that's true. So, but. let's get so we pick up in chapter 3, uh right after Wade mentions that he just whooped up on H uh on Tron Deadly Disc, which is we kind of covered a little bit in the last show. Uh they're playing the Intellivision um they're playing that game on the Intellivision. At which point, uh, H picks up a copy of Starlog magazine that's on the floor, and he mentions this particular version had Rutger Hauer on the on the cover of it from Lady Hawk. Uh, and so, if you go and do the so, if you go by the re- if you do the research, the the cover that they're referring to is issue number ninety four, which was released in May of nineteen eighty five. Uh, which, as best as I was able to determine, that issue actually doesn't even have any information about Battle for Endor because the rest of that quote, the rest of that uh, part in the book. They're talking about how he was reading this cool piece on the Battle for Endor. And I guess you don't have necessarily have to tie those two together, but it reads as though it was in there. It is not. It is not in um, issue 94. It does come up, though, uh, seven issues later in issue 101, which was the which was the Starlog issue that they covered uh, Battle for Endor. And it's got uh, Wicket on the cover um, as well. So we're going to start by kicking off and talking about Starlog magazine, because this is a magazine that was pretty like, you know, between this and like Fangoria, you know, when you go back and think about like the eighties and you think about all the magazines, because we're, that's, I mean, there were so many magazines and magazines is what you had. I mean, you had video game magazines, this magazine, I had martial arts magazines, guns and ammo. What? Now oh, we're talking, guns and, let's stop no, that I stuff. Have, no, I didn't have guns, guns and, and ammo. ammo. Yeah, no, that's yeah, more my field speed. and stream. No, I, well, not that, but guns and ammo, the martial arts magazines, that was up my wheelhouse, man. Uh, Omni was the one that I I liked Omni quite a bit. Popular science, uh, yeah. amazing stories, right? I mean, you think there's so many great magazines that were out. Yeah, Starlog uh, but, was not one of them for me. Really? No, yeah, no. Just, nope. I find that bizarre. Why as do you find that you bizarre? Like I told you. Well, yeah, but I didn't care about what... I didn't care about that. I was into the guns and ammos and the martial arts because I wanted to be the karate kid. You know, all those things. I was I wasn't really into it. I'm sure I read it because I remember going to the local convenience store up the up the road from me and uh, they used to have obviously the magazine rack. And uh, I I used to, you know, go through them. And and of course, anything Star Wars, I used to pull it off the shelf and just kind of read the magazine and put it back um, because I was just interested in that one particular thing. I wasn't interested in the whole magazine. So I would just go over to my guns and ammo or whatever, or or the Super <laughs> Nintendo uh, magazine that was out at Nintendo the Nintendo Power. Yeah, that that one. Nintendo Power. Yeah, I would do that. I, I didn't really care too much about that. You know what I mean? Like, really? like for with movies, I always like to see the documentary things. Like I remember when Return of the Jedi came out, and they were talking about uh, the the, uh, the physics of Star Wars, and George said, "Well, that's why I made the you know this in the galaxy far, far away. It's not." part of our thing and you know i could get away with the physics so to speak and i remember that was like on cbs or nbc but i like the behind the scenes like if you're going to describe stuff with like movie magic i I just don't see like a magazine doesn't do it for me Mm -hmm. i need to visually see it and hear it so that that's why i never these things never appealed to me i know i know about starlog i've seen it a million times uh, when i was a kid and everything it just and i know i've read it or like my friends had it and i read it for whatever when I saw it, but I, I didn't actively go out 
in and look at that. Of course, I was also Congrats. trying to look for Playboy, but I couldn't get that either at oh, that age. Boy. But you know, yeah. hey, I was a uh, uh, quite the deviant back in the day. <laughs> yeah, we've made that. What do you mean clear. back in the day? Well, back in the day, nothing's am, changed, my friend. You're I just am, older. That's well, all. Well, I'm the Lando Calrissian of podcasting. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I've given you that title yet. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I do a better job than Donald Glover. But oh, yeah, oh, oh. I'm here all Anyways. week, everybody. No, I'm Good night, Are everyone. you saying you're in love with the computer? I don't. What? Well, maybe, maybe. Okay. All right. So let's Whatever, do, before man. I turn this over to Crowley, because I want to get him to chime in on this too. But so real quick. So this magazine was actually created in 1976 by Kerry O'Quinn and Norman Jacobs. And originally it was focused to put, I mean, Starlog, right? That's obviously a Star Trek reference. Um, but it was originally supposed to be focused on that. And then it, within just a matter of years, right? I mean, almost a year later, this was one of the first uh, mediums that, that actually was covering this, you know, little indie film called Star Wars. And, uh, you know, it also was like the one of the first magazines that was that kind of broke the news of the Star Trek motion picture movie. I mean, it was the magazine if you were into like science fiction movies, books, TV series. Uh, Battlestar Galactica was coming up. They did a lot of stuff with that. Um, so all of that, I mean, with all that there, Crowley, was this something that you look forward to? And were you going in from as more of a if you picked it up, were you doing it as more of a science fiction fan or were you more interested in the fact that it was called Starlog? And this was kind of the source of the time for Star Trek news. Well. I'll be honest, this this episode has brought back a lot of uh I don't I don't know if they're bad feelings but a lot of bad memories I guess because I was I was kind of forced to <laughs> to keep my geekdom flag at, at, at half mast oh, yeah. yeah my my dad was one of those dads where you're going to like football you're going to like baseball you're going to like basketball and you're going to not like star trek you're going to not like star wars you're going to not like battlestar galactica and i don't know about you guys but back when i was a kid we had one tv in the house yep. like now you know you've got four or five just in one one area of the house so i couldn't i couldn't get to tv when i wanted to unless my dad wasn't home and then i could that's when i could like start watching star trek and star wars and battlestar galactica and all of that so magazines like that no those were taboo in my house mm. no 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 you could not have those now if you wanted to have a car magazine or if you wanted to have sports illustrated or if you wanted to have sporting news or guns and ammo all of those were acceptable but no 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 not not the starlog nothing science fiction not my boy yeah. my boy's gonna be a man right who taught you to read this you did all right um <laughs> made from watching you so well that's it yeah well so i would this is a magazine like for well i didn't have money to buy the magazine but if if and when i did this is definitely a magazine that i would pick up because it, and undoubtedly there would there was be there would be something in there for Star Wars. And don't get me wrong, I think I've, I think we talked about this two episodes ago or maybe it was just the last episode. Star Trek is something that I've I've kind of had a, a loose relationship with. I'm I know enough that I can hold my own as far as a conversation, but I'm not a fanatic like I am with Star Wars. Um but I didn't mind the Star Trek stuff in there and it was kind of cool that I was getting my Star Trek, I was getting my Star Trek, I was getting my Battlestar. I was getting everything in this magazine. Um, so every chance that I had, I would definitely get it. And I still I only have one copy left and I'm holding it right now. It's uh, issue number 35, it's got Darth Vader on it. And I've had this now for, I don't know. Well, I guess, I've, honestly, it, I don't know if I bought it initially when it came out, but I know I bought it early on in the eighties. It was one of the very first Starlog magazines I ever I purchased. Uh, and it was just funny cause I, it's been sitting here for so long in, in preparation for the show. I pulled it out, dug it out of the, the garage and was going through it. And there's a lot of stuff in here about, uh, Lando Calrissian and Empire Strikes Back because the movie had just come out. Um, it, it only been out empire strikes back. It only been out like maybe three months, um, when this magazine hit the stands. Um, but it was, it's, it's just, it was an interesting little throwback ride, um, to kind of go through it. And I really wish I had some of the other ones and I don't have them anymore. Um, and then just kind of a, a side story here, you know, this magazine really went the way of the Dodo, much like most magazines did, um, you know, starting around 2001 because, uh, this little thing called the internet, right? Everybody found different ways to get their news. Uh, print was dead cost of printing just started skyrocketing and you start having magazines just kind of fall by the wayside at that point. Um, they celebrated that they, they ran all the way to 2009 Starlog magazine. Um, and I think it was in 2006, they celebrated the 30th anniversary. Um, and then a year later, the warehouse that housed all of their back issues burned down in a fire. So there really aren't any more back issues, not even owned by the company. They're just gone. So really the only way you can find these back issues now is, you know, places like eBay or part of, you know, private collections. 
Um, and then finally, if that wasn't enough, they, you know, they finally filed for bankruptcy in March of 2008 and closed up shop in 2009. And we've not had a Starlog magazine since. So that's kind of a little bit of history there. Um, but any final thoughts before we move on from Starlog magazine or just, I mean, just magazines in general, because they were such a huge part of the eighties. Nah, I don't. Well, I'm yeah. surprised you didn't have like a box where you could just went and you started reading these, Albert. Like, you, I'm surprised you didn't have the episode or the 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 issue mentioned in the book, just in a box in the back full of other star logs. No, oh, yeah, nope, not yet, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. He's You're working on the. He's collection. working on it on eBay. I mean, the good <laughs> news is you can open it up, and it, like you said, Albert, it's a time capsule to when Star Wars was good. I mean, you got that. Oh. <laughs> Unless we bring yeah. up, you know, the Ewoks in the Battle of Endor and the caravan of garbage. Oh, yeah. garbage when I mean, Star Wars was good. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll post pictures because there's some good, there's some pretty cool stuff in there. There's like these, uh, you know, you could fill out all these different forms and get like sea monkeys and, uh, you know, order your solar. Those were in comic books, those too, right? Yeah, they like, were in comic books. Do you remember those too. in comic books? Like, those were amazing. Yep. Um, they have a cool Starlog shirt that you can order. Uh, six ninety five plus postage is what they're advertising here. Uh, but yeah, there's it's uh, I kind of miss the I miss magazines. I, m- kind of back to your point earlier, uh, Crowley, about just having something physically in your hand. When it comes to like books and magazines, that's one of the things that I really have not been able to just let go. I have to have something that I can feel because I have this weird thing where I like, like I don't know, I don't know how to do it. Rub the pages together when I'm reading. It's just a habit. Yeah, the smell of the book. Yeah, the, the smell, smell of the book. book yeah. It's yeah. It, there's something definitely. I don't. It's it's material. It's physical. There's something that you just you get from reading a book in your hand or a magazine in your hand or even a newspaper that you just don't get from reading it on a screen. Yep, uh, I would agree. I, um. All right. So so he's talking about Starlog magazine. And so he makes references. I was just reading this great piece on Ewoks, the battle for Endor. Um, I think uh, this is made for TV, released in 1985. Um, and he kind of talks about how Star Wars is one of his specialties. And there's plenty more to talk about here as we get to the book. But uh, <laughs> then he goes on to say it's total garbage, a real low point in the history of the wars. Um, so we'll, let's talk about these movies because the, one of the questions that I had. So the challenges here really are the homework assignments were to watch these movies. And um, I... I think I mentioned the last show I own a uh, caravan of courage or the walk adventure as it was originally called Ugh. on VHS, but I don't own battle for Endor. I had to go watch that on YouTube um, because I hadn't seen it in honestly, I think I've seen it once and I was pretty young when I saw it and I did not remember much about it. Um, but in preparation for the show, I found the version on YouTube, which you can do and it's, it's not the greatest, but Hey, it works and you kind of get the idea of what's going on. Um, but let me ask both of you. Let's just start off with this. Had you guys seen these movies before? And well, better question. Did you watch them ahead of the show that we're recording tonight? <laughs> I haven't watched it since 1984, 1985. Yeah. Um, and I probably will not watch it ever again. I'd rather <laughs> go back to the holiday special and watch that debacle. <laughs> no. The good okay, news is, out. but the good news <laughs> is I'd watch all three of these before the last Jedi. Uh. So there's that. <laughs> So this this is not okay. Wait, before we go yeah. any further, yeah, these are not worse than the the holiday special. I mean, there's no comparison. Holiday special still stands, in my opinion, clear head and shoulders above the these last two Jedi. Terms it's of, much better than the last Jedi. Garbage. That's that's for sure. It is better than the last Jedi. I mean, you get the Boba Fett cartoon. That was great stuff. When did Mike turn into one of the Muppets that's up in the balcony? Just oh, that was in episode one. one of the basement. Yeah, I think. I, I'm pretty okay. sure that's when right. it, I took a dark turn. <laughs> well, we even declared it on that show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so you and William. Yes, exactly. So I am a grumpy old man now, and uh, I mean, I remember when I was a kid. I, I can go back to what I was, what I felt when I was a kid, because I remember when you know Return of the Jedi ends, and that was it. And then we get this announcement. Oh, yeah, you have this special, you know, uh, Ewoks and all that. We're going to Endor. I'm like, all right, that's we'll check it out. I mean, the Ewoks at the time, they didn't really bother me. They bothered me when I get older. So it wasn't bad. I remember like, OK, this is we get more Star Wars and it's like the holiday special. But OK, whatever. And it was OK. I mean, it didn't bother me as a kid. Uh, but I know seeing clips of it through the years and all that stuff, it's just nonsense it's crazy crazy stuff although yeah 
There is a Michael Jackson connection to all this, isn't there? I can't remember what the hell the connection was, but I don't know. That's just popped in my head while we're talking here, which means absolutely uh, nothing. So pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. But uh, he's super drugged, super high right now. Yeah, exactly. Wicked high. Um, but uh, yeah, I see what you did there. Wicked. Yeah. Uh, hey, Crowley, did you, <laughs> you caught me. did you get a chance to watch these at all? Yeah. I, I, look, okay. So, no. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> I, I tried. I tried. Why would you even I, try? I did. No, look, I watched Airplane. I rented Airplane. I rented Howard the Duck. And I, I started <laughs> All watching movies better the, than The Last Jedi, by the way. Sorry. Uh, and I tried. I tried. I tried so hard just for you. But you, you said it right at the beginning. This wasn't homework. This, this was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the challenge. That's right. That's fair. Uh, I refuse to look, challenge these these yeah, <laughs> these movies aren't they're they're not good. They're just not good, and they weren't good then. Look, I remembered like Mike. I didn't have a problem with the Ewoks until I was older, and I understood what Lucas did, which was just he made money, <laughs> which is fine. I've got no problem with that capitalism. Let's let's go for it. But when you get older, you kind of realize the silliness of these tiny fuzzy Muppet bears defeating the most feared army in all of the galaxy. It's ridiculous. But I also remember watching these movies as a kid. And as a kid, you can always, you always know what's good and what's not good by how much time you actually spent watching the movie. And I, if I remember right, I got about as far in as a kid watching these movies as I did, uh, you know, the last couple of days <laughs> as an adult. Yeah. I, I you, you get, to a certain point, and you just lose all interest. But yeah. you want to know, kid, I, it was well, it, probably a little further. It, here's a fun Easter egg that I happened to come across when I was watching that awesome movie Solo. It's actually a decent movie. Um, when they're in the pit, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to spoil something for you. So whatever, turn it off if you need to. But when you notice there's armor, and Chewie's obviously eaten a person, and all I could think of was the Ewoks eating people. And I'm like, wow, because yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they do. So I'm thinking to myself, how is it that Chewie never ate Han, Han over all these years? Or Han, Han, excuse me. I'm channeling my Lando. Um, I thought that was interesting, though. I, I, was I the only one that caught that whole? Th I must have been the only one that maybe because I'm thinking these awful thoughts in my head because uh, I'm a grumpy old man <laughs> these days. Uh, Chewie, I think you just want everything in Star Wars to be cannibalized at this point. Well, yeah, and you're I, just internalizing it that way. Yeah, I just thought it was funny, though. I mean, that actually, that whole scene fit a lot of old stuff. There was a lot of things going there, as you and Jonesy discussed on the show. But I'll, I'll leave it at that, Albert. Continue, sir. No, no worries. Um, well, let's talk about the Ewoks just briefly. So uh, we don't need to. Well, we could talk about the movies, too. We are. But the uh, we should. the Ewoks. <laughs> let's talk about the Ewoks because they uh, their background um, and Really, it originally started when Return of the Jedi was coming out. George Lucas wanted that scene to be on Kashyyyk, so the planet of the Wookiees. Uh, and you can find a number of different stories and probably variants of this, but it boiled down to the fact that that was going to cost a lot more money to have these costumes, and they were going to need a lot more people to do the Wookiee costumes. And so they started playing with kind of shortening things down. Um, they went through seven, uh, several revisions, and suddenly it became kind of this fat-looking bear thing. Uh, but that's how the Ewoks came about. The, that again, originally was supposed to be Wookiees, uh, that we saw fighting. And, and one of the main reasons why they had to also divert apart from the cost, uh, to have Wookiees is because they had already established Chewbacca and the Wookiee race as being more than primitive people, right? Yeah. They were technologically advanced and, uh, you know, of, of high intelligence. And so they couldn't say, okay, now they've got these primitive e or Wookiees, uh, that are suddenly fighting the empire. So that's, that was kind of how the origin uh, came about and it was later on and we kind of just mentioned this, but I think it was later on. I forget what novel it was, but they alluded to the fact that these guys, these Ewoks after return of the Jedi in the battle of Endor, um, ate some of these, uh, stormtroopers. So, I mean, we kind of knew this, right? Cause I mean, if you think about return of the Jedi, we have that whole scene where they're going to sacrifice and have this festival or they were going to eat Han, Leia or Han, Luke and, you know, Chewbacca, uh, for C3PO, right? Because they were kind of worshiping him as a God and, uh, that feast was supposed to be for him. So kind of a dark side, I guess, to the Ewoks, as cute and cuddly as they are there. Well, I, I get that whole uh, thing with the, the budget. See, this is the, the the thing where, you know, those documentaries pay when you hear the, like, George talking about why he did things. Because he was always thinking practically 
in money sense too. I mean, he owned the company, so he had to think of things. And you always wonder like, well, why George, you, you think of these grand schemes of things and you want to do it a certain way, but then you're like, well, I got to do it this way for this. And I want to spend more money on this fight than I do on, on the, the, the Wookiees in this big battle. I, I got to find ways to cu cut costs and do things a certain way. So I, I get that. And also when you think about it historically wise, and as he said before, and, you know, Apocalypse Now ties into it because he was actually a producer on that and wanted to do that, but he, that fell through and whatever. Um, but, he, you know, the Vietnam War was a big thing with him. And, of course, you know, the Viet Cong and, and uh, all that with the little guy taking on the big guy at that time. And that's kind of where he got that inspiration from. And yeah. that's how it all snowballed. So I, I get where he was coming from. And I didn't have a problem with the Ewoks. I, I, it's like this. It's like Jar Jar. They don't bother me in a sense because I know what their purpose is and why they're there. It doesn't really bother me all that much. Um, so I, I get it. I, I just prefer, I don't like the cute teddy bear thing. I, I just don't, it just doesn't do anything for me now that I'm older. However, they are, and Jar Jar are better than L3. So, you know, they got that going for them. L3 is probably the worst <laughs> Star Wars character ever. So, you know, congratulations, Jar Jar. You've moved up the food chain. So good for him. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible, no. but hey, yeah. it's possible. So here, here, let's get back <laughs> yeah, to... I would uh, completely ignores, yep. ignores all that. Let's get yeah. back to Caravan yeah. of Courage. Yes, yeah, so let's, so, let's get into um, that. Teak, a little white, and, crazy you know, looking... Teak is, uh, Teak is later, and I put a picture of yeah, him there. Yeah, well, Teak, Teak I remember him guy. running 100 miles an hour. I remember that as a kid. Yeah, we'll get to that yeah, in a second. I, I, That's just trash. So let me yeah, let me just give the you... The whole thing is trash, Albert, so... Let me give you... <laughs> yeah. Because honestly, from if you go back, going back to the passage in Ready Player One, um, you know, he says there was some good stuff that came about it. And I really tried. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm, if you haven't, if you've already, if you've been listening to the show, you know, I'm pretty open and, and, and like a lot of things, including this horrible really, music, really hard Run, to Duran, get. Through. Duran, Duran. Yeah. yeah. Thank boingo, you. Boingo, boingo. Yeah. Mm. Here we go. Let them all out. But uh, <laughs> I get the feeling yeah, this like was, this show is more about hate than love, to be honest. No, because it's it's maybe not, when I'm not. on. I think that's what happens. But See, anyway. we're doing exactly what the basement's supposed to be, though, right? Well, I, mean, I guess. But they get down there and they're having these conversations, and sometimes they, they don't always agree on what's good and what's not. And that's kind of we're staying we're well well within the premise of the show and the in the in the spirit of the basement from the book. So well, we're okay. Don't worry about. I know, that. but I, I bring a lot of negative stuff, and it's more for fun and joking. I'm not that serious. Yeah. Although L three is horrible. But go ahead. All right, but so. <laughs> So to bring it back to Caravan of Courage. So this movie, also it, it was really hard to get through. It's number one. It's got a lot of things going against it. It's very, <laughs> first off, it was made for TV, right? Yeah. So you've got uh, somewhere they had to fill up all this time. I mean, even the storyline itself is pretty simplistic. And it really, if they weeded out all the junk, they probably could have done this movie in 30 minutes. It's really a 30 minute episode. It did not have to be an hour and a half long. Um, the fact that they've got all these different transitions in it because they have to go to commercial break really kills a lot of it too. Uh, there's some, some of the breaks just don't even make sense. Like, why would you break here? You're, you're, you're kind of killing the momentum. And sometimes you want that, you want to keep people in suspense and hang on to it. Uh, and they just some really bad choices there. Uh, it's a very slow movie. Like there's not a whole lot going on. I guess they didn't learn their lesson from. Um, you know, the, the holiday special where you had 30 minutes of Wookiees talking with no subtitles. And here we go again, right into Caravan of Courage. The first like, you know, well, the whole movie really is a bunch of Ewoks and they're talking and yeah, you've got a narrator. I think it was, uh, it was a narrator. What's his name? He's famous. The guy that did, uh, that used oh, yeah. to narrate like, uh, Rudolph the Burl Red Nose Ring. Brindley. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's in, that's he. Wait, Burl Ives? Burl Ives. Yeah. So Burl Ives is the narrator for Caravan of Courage. And he's, he's throughout the whole movie, he's the glue kind of keeping all this together because he, if he was not there, it is the holiday special all over again in terms of a disaster, right? It kind of, it kind of is though, Albert. Well, I'm, I'm giving it more credit than it probably deserves. Yeah, you're right. Um, but one of the interesting things about, oh, so just, I don't know so if there's the anything interesting about it, but. Yeah, no, there's a couple. I got a, I got a couple we things. Got our original not, Mace is in here, you know. Exactly. Mace I was yeah. going to get the Mace. Mace, right? Tawani, so Mace yeah. is the brother. Yeah, Tawani. Then. Um, and that was always a character that George George Lucas had Mace as a name like way back, right? Even before, like along with Kira, who we finally got in Solo. But Kira, Mace, these character names had always been in the back of his mind. They were in some of the original stuff that he written down for the storylines. But this was it was almost like. 
he didn't know, like, obviously he didn't know he was going to be doing the prequels and, you know, he'd already used, they needed a character name. And he's like, well, I've always had this one. I've always wanted to use it. Let me stick it in Caravan of Courage. So they named the kid, the older brother Mace, uh, which I thought was, you know, I guess kind of cool. Um, Wicket speaks the, in this the movie. The character wasn't, the character wasn't The character cool. was terrible. I felt bad for that kid. Like yeah. he's a horrible actor. Eric oh, Walker? Yeah, yeah he kind of got thrown into that, I, I feel like. Well, oh yeah, no, you'll be fine. He's quite the uh, musician now, though. So, is he really? Oh yeah, he's. You might want to. He he makes music that you would actually like, uh, Albert. So, oh, so you should it's check. Bad music. Yeah, you should check him out, Eric. Well, <laughs> he does all that synthesizing, crazy stuff. You know. Oh okay. Check yeah. it out. You know. Yeah, the only thing I know he did he did something with Lesson Zero. I maybe I'm getting him mixed up with somebody else, but I don't know. Anyways, um, but Wicked talks in this movie. So these movies take place. Here's my, here's another problem. Like I might start getting angry here. These movies take place before Return of the Jedi, and yet in this movie, in Caravan of Courage, Wicket says a few words, not much. There's a, there's a really awkward scene where you keep saying, starship crash, starship crash, and it goes on for like a minute. But anyways, on top of that, once we get to uh, the battle for Endor, he is speaking English in full sentences nearly, better than Yoda does, right? And then somehow he meets up with Leia three years later. And he doesn't know what the heck she's saying. So I, it was just bizarre well, that they, they took it here, down that route. Because here's the thing. Because back then, it's like the comics and anything that was really like books and everything. It was all for fun. It wasn't really the big thing. The big thing was the movies. And I, I think you I, mispronounced money. Well, that too. Thank you. Okay. Um, but yes. And maybe the powers that be that are in play now could learn a thing or two about this type of thing. And we've always said it on the Cantina cast where maybe you need to say, all right, this episode is going to be canon. This is going to be just for fun or whatever you need to call it. And I know we had different levels of, we had G canon, this canon, Mike's canon, Albert's canon, Crowley's canon. Everyone's got a canon thing. I get that. But for the official thing, you know, like the episodes of, you know, the Skywalker storyline should be the official. That's it. And then all these other things, you know, like the comics and stuff. In the early days, the comic books were, I mean, I think they're bad now, but they were horrible back then. They were like, you know, throw anything against the wall and let it stick and, and you know, have fun with it. It was it was a nice place to play and it was fun. And, you know, even the novels and stuff, they were uh, interesting, but it wasn't, we didn't take it serious as like, you know, we, we'd see a Star Wars comic or something and we'd read it like, all right, that's cool. That's great. And then we'd yeah, just move yeah. on with life. Now it's like, if anything, if the the scar has moved on someone. We, we will freak out or whatever it is back. But isn't that more the age of the internet no, than it is anything else? Um, I mean, maybe. cause the hardcore fans now have a, have a forum and a vocal forum uh, to, to air their grievances and let their voice be known. I think that's kind of part of the reason we got the solo movie we did. Cause as we were talking about before the podcast, it kind of caters to the hardcore fan. It is yeah. fan service of the highest level. And so and that's not a bad thing. I don't I, think that's a bad thing. No, I just, just, just don't expect, but they have to walk a line. Yeah. And I think that line is hard to walk. How do you, how do you make money? How do you cater to the fans and how do you bring in new fans? Those who yeah. aren't hardcore fans. Yeah. So, well, I, I think back then you were limited to a small circle of friends. You'd read the comic, one of you'd buy it or something or, or book or whatever it may be. You'd talk about it for 30 a week or, you know, 30 days, whatever it may have been. Well, we were kids back then. So yeah. we always talked about it for wherever, forever and ever, but you moved on in a sense, like, all right, it's no, not like the end all be all like, you know, there's another thing to come out and you talk about that. Like now it's like, we wait on everything and we, we look at everything with a magnifying glass and, or a telescope at this point. But you know, in any yeah. case, yeah. that's just my thoughts. I mean, I, I get what you're saying now. It's like the, the holiday special was not when George wrote that and did all that. It was like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Just do it because the name's Star Wars and people will watch and we can sell advertising things and, you know, market action figures and whatever. So, and, you know, hey, that's the way it was back then. It was, it was, you know, money, as Carly said. Now it's, it's money, but, you know, everybody wants to make everything the up and up, I guess. But anyway. Yeah. Well, you got to guess, but I mean, wasn't that what all the cartoons were in the 80s? I mean, if we're talking. Well, you get droids, I mean, it cartoon, was a marketing machine, well. the Transformers, yeah. you've got, you've got He-Man, like those were all just to sell action figures, just to sell toys. So why wouldn't Lucas do things? Well, the action to, figures to, are what made the, the prequel trilogy. That's the, oh, making absolutely. money off of that. Of course, now they can't well, sell anything for action figures, but hey, you know, times change, but yeah. uh, you know. Well, I mean, this, yeah. so part of this too is the fact that by this point, you, you, there had to be something in Lucas's head that said, 
I'm probably never coming back to this. I mean, he, yeah, he'd already gone on record a few times saying yeah. that, you know, if he did it, if he did it, uh, you know, it would be, it may not even be him and all that. So, I mean, he came off a grueling and exhausting, you know, nine year run in terms of putting these movies together. And, um, you know, he was fatigued and burnt out and the reviews of Return of the Jedi is as good as that was, it, you know, probably didn't help. But anyways, so at some point he probably just looked at this and said, you know what? I'm just, let him have the Ewoks. Let him do whatever at this point. I don't really care. I'm never coming back to this planet again kind of thing. I just, that was a quote from Star Wars. Um, but so, so maybe he did. Maybe he allowed them to just kind of have some of these liberties because this, this movie, as well as the other one, toys with another aspect that was very interesting, which was the whole magic aspect of things that we had never really gotten in Star Wars. I mean, we didn't even see uh, magic, at least from a canon perspective, until what? Clone Wars? Yeah. Black, yeah, black magics. Magics. Magics, right? Yeah, but has, I mean, prior to this, I mean, these movies are very heavy. Uh, there's really almost, well, there is. There's well, it's no very dark, dark crystal like. Yeah. In, in a way, crystal. like that always reminds I remember watching it. I remember, I, I remember having that in my head, like the dark crystal. And there was one other that popped in my head when I was a kid. I, I can't remember what it was at the time, but it'll come when we're done with the episode, it'll pop into my head and I'll think of that. But yeah, but we did, we never got any of that. Like that magic of like the dark crystal kind of magic type stuff. I I don't know. Yeah, and in this and these movies have it in spades. I mean, there's some really surreal moments where it's just like avant garde kind of stuff where you're really trying to understand what the heck's happening uh, in a lot of these scenes. But um, I guess one thing I should really do because I kind of skipped over it because we just jumped into to the horrible. Um, <laughs> I wanted to. I want we so Caravan of Courage. So if you guys don't know, um, it, there's these are two movies that came out. Um, after Return of the Jedi, you know, yet they take place before Return of the Jedi, the actual movie itself. And I'll try to do this in 30 seconds, but Caravan Courage is about a family that crash lands on Endor. The mom and dad get separated from the kids. The kids end up with the Ewoks. And the mom and dad get captured by this huge creature called the Gorax, which is like this hmm. uh, orc looking thing. He looks like an orc kind of out of uh, Lord of the Rings movies uh, with the Peter Jackson stuff. And uh, he, I don't know, he's like, 20 feet tall or 30 feet tall. So they get captured. And the whole premise of the show is really a, a movie is about the kid who's Mace and then Sindel, who's, who's a daughter. or She's like, I don't know, four or five years old. They they enlist the help of the Ewoks and they're they're They basically go on this quote caravan of courage to this tower that Gorax lives. And prior to going on this trip, they get, they meet Logre. So Logre is actually one of the characters from Return of the Jedi he has this little cameo, I guess you can call it that, yeah. uh, in this movie. And he gives them all these magical items. It's very similar to kind of like Lord of the Rings, right? Where they have all these different items and there's this fellowship that's created and they're all going on this journey to go rescue um, the parents. And so they get out there. Uh, there's a really awkward scene where they've got to cross a, a web, like a spider web. And the spider comes down and, and you can see the strings. And I mean, it's just a horrible puppeteering job, uh, to be fair. And they get across that and they rescue the mom and dad because Mace is on this like seesaw thing and they, the two Ewoks jump on the other side and it launches them up and he grabs the cage. I mean, I'm not making this up. This is really what happens in the movie. No, we lived um, it. We lived it. We saw it. We saw it yeah. and we lived yeah, it. We we, yeah, it was bad. And they, yep. So it was bad. They rescue, <laughs> they rescue the parents and that's kind of how the movie ends. Pick up um, almost. I don't know how much time passes between that and was Ryan Dur battle. Johnson directing that where there's no the time. Battle, yeah, it's almost it picks up right immediately, <laughs> oh, just kind of like yeah. Last Jedi. Okay, but uh, the battle for Endor. Uh, so this one's a little bit. So this was actually a little bit more. It's more tolerable of the two. If I had to pick which one's wow. really bad, I'm gonna say Caravan of Courage because it's pretty bad. This one's pretty bad as well. But it's it's at least they jump into the action right away. Like it opens with within seven minutes, mom is dead. Uh, Mace is dead, and then like a minute later, Dad's dead. So all of and the only person left is this poor little girl, Cindo, who doesn't shed a tear at all. Like it's just the most like cold hearted child that's ever lived. It's a or rough maybe childhood. <laughs> Rattle hardened on, yeah, the, exactly. on the on the streets been, of Endor. I've been in wars, man. <laughs> the mean streets. Of See, Endor. my question though is, why didn't the Ewoks eat them? They, uh, yeah, I don't know. They they could have. And and there was all there was almost, there was one part at least in Caravan of Courage where you were like oh they're gonna eat they're gonna eat these kids there's no doubt these are just just, just food they're bringing this back to the village um, yeah but they never do and I don't know if it's because Wicket and it's a little girl maybe and she's they were sick too and, bony maybe 
Yeah, you know, maybe they're not coming up on them. They were afraid the perm was going to get. Oh stuck yeah, in that the... Goldilocks there, yeah. man. I just oh, remember the, that old man that was in the the thing. What was his name there? Jeremy, whatever. Noah. No, no, no the, Noah they, is that... the old man from the Battle of End, or so, yeah, Battle of End. Yeah, that guy, whatever his yeah. name is, the old guy with the stick. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah, that that kind of reminds me of you a little bit, Mike. Yeah, yeah, about... that really is you. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you mean will by... be? <laughs> That's when, what? when when I fade away and you guys are like, where did where did that podcast Star Wars podcaster might go? And you guys look, and you'll find me on the forest in California. But well, I won't be in California. I can assure you that uh, in Montana or something. And you'd be like, oh, there he is. He looks just like the guy in Paddle of Endor. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I'm just cosplaying this guys. So and so okay. So here. I know that was all right. Here, so here's here's Battle for Endor, and I'll do this in, in 30, well, probably 60 seconds. But Are you kidding? We've been doing a five hour show, so go ahead. I mean, yeah, take, yeah. Right, just we'll describe the whole movie. No, I'm no, kidding. we don't do that because I could just but read we're the not... synopsis right off Wikipedia. Yeah. No, 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 it's better if I do this. No, so listen, okay. I don't know if it is. I don't know if it's bettering humanity. <laughs> so it, so at all. everybody, they all die, right? With the exception we're of we're all gonna die like listening to this, but <laughs> seven minutes, they're all that family's dead, right? And these marauders, they're, they're killed by these marauders, which, by the way, no, different ones, no, different ones. Oh. Enfys Ness is not in this. Um, oh, OK, but one of them, I the thought dad, everything connected these days. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. So the dad uh, in this movie was played by Paul Gleason. Right. So Paul Gleason was yeah. assistant principal Vernon from uh, the Breakfast Club. I don't know why they changed it or why they switched. Um, I feel like if he would have told these marauders, you mess with the bull, <laughs> you get the horn. You want to know where Sindel's yeah. going to be in 10 years? I'll tell you where she's going to be. But anyway, <laughs> that would be awesome if they just started busting out into those lines. Don't they you, would... and Wicked pulls away and he does the fist pump in the air. <laughs> yeah, right. That been, yeah. That, now that would have been a great movie. I would have uh, been like, yeah, all right, I can get by that. That's cool. Look ahead. Um, can we get Lucas? Can we get, can we get Disney to retcon that? Uh, Disney's could. got enough issues going on with its own. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so Wicked and um, Sindel, uh, they get captured along with a couple of other Ewoks. They get res They free themselves. Um, they run into Noah, who's played by Wilford Brimley, uh, Mr. Quaker Oats man himself. Right. Uh, beat us. And he's, he's basically Luke from the last Jedi. He's like a, kind of like this hermit. Uh, he doesn't want to help anybody. In fact, he, he did tells, he throw a lightsaber over his shoulder? Yeah, I, I don't remember he, that. Uh, <laughs> no, he, he had didn't. more respect for such a item, item artifact. Oh, well, I'm sorry, um, Ryan Johnson didn't. Um, that's <laughs> for such an elegant it, weapon. Yeah, I guess it's not so elegant. So they go. Uh, <laughs> well, so he brushes Ryan. them off, mm. and then he takes them in. And <laughs> Wicket and Sindel are there with him. Um, eventually, you know, they he goes to. Help. Uh, what happens? I think. Um, oh my goodness, I'm I'm forgetting who gets captured first. But anyways, <laughs> so did everybody else. Yeah, it's 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 bad. But there's uh there's this little guy named Teak. We haven't talked about Teak. Uh, why do we have to? We have to. So Teak is this little like he's derpy... Sonic the Hedgehog before Sonic the Hedgehog. He's like a happy gremlin. He's like yeah. Alf meets Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> that is the best we... description of him. That is the best ever. Yeah, so okay. Teak is his name, but do you know what is you know what race of alien he is? He's he's a teak. gremlin. He's a teak. Magwai. Yeah, he, right. He's a teak. Thank you for the right. Yeah, he's a teak. His name is Teak, and he is a teak because he's Go like figure. the only one we've ever seen. And let's leave it that way. <laughs> Thank yep. God. Um. There's a there's a musical number in this movie where. Uh. <laughs> Are you, where are you gonna sing it? No, I'm not gonna sing it. But Noah's sing on, my star, sing my star, sing, do it. No, that's I know you know the words. I do know you that know song, but that, that I hope we'll get to that second. Hold Does on, Oingo Boingo sing it? Did, I bet you Oingo Boingo did the thing. soundtrack for this whole the, <laughs> Duran the Duran. Yeah, Duran Duran, Oingo Boingo. They wrote it. <laughs> nope, nope, not those guys. <laughs> All right, uh, but there's a musical number. So Noah's playing the flute. You've got Teak is playing some kind of wind instrument. You got. Wicket, who's jumping around, banging on stuff. I don't even really understand. Was it the pan flute? Was yeah, he playing sort of. the pan flute? Yeah. Wick, Wicket was just it. trying to get the hell out of this movie. That's what he was trying to do. <laughs> and he couldn't. So, so Sindo gets captured, the little girl, and they, she goes back to a castle, which, like, where is this castle Endor? Wasn't it supposed to be all, like, wooded? But whatever. Um, so she gets captured. He goes, she gets captured into a castle. And then Noah, Teak, and Wicket. They plan this rescue. Um, they get there and there's these two guards and I'm sorry, but there's these two guards and they're playing what I can only assume would be Sabak. 
Um, and one of them has a card up his sleeve, very similar to Lando in the new solo movie. Uh, and they get mad. They shoot each other. Are you saying that it's that it's Lando? Well, I think they honestly, I think they kind of stole this from this movie. If, uh, if I'm being honest, so. well, they're not very original these days. So, <laughs> oh, sorry. at what point, Albert, are you are you gonna upset pay me? that we're we're back on this? Well, show? I, he's he's got a three deal contract, so I've got to bring him in for at least one more show, uh, and then after that, yeah, I'm letting I, him yeah, go. Yeah, I would let me go too. I mean, I, I would <laughs> if well, he's, I, he's no, I know Mike. He's just, he's doing all this on purpose. He's trying to get off the show, and he's doing a really good job. So. <laughs> no, no, so, right? no. I really I really like coming on the show, but but you you keep bringing up Star Wars, and I have to yeah. relive. You know, I got to go to therapy for this because the Jonesy <laughs> told me I need to go to therapy and I'm trying. Well, but did you, but, did you, did you, let me just add, did you watch Airplane and Howard the Duck or? Oh, I've, I, no, but I, I, I know okay. them pretty well. And, um, okay. just that, I just want to Howard ask. the Duck is way better than The Last Jedi. I know that. All right. Well, we'll get, it's actually we'll get better Howard than the Solo duck. as well. Um, but you know. Anyway, all right. So, so yeah, let's, let me let's let me let me finish this, my uh, yeah. sixty second synopsis here. This is a half hour synopsis now. <laughs> yep, it's an hour now. Um, where was I at? Oh, it doesn't yeah. really so, matter. So they get to the they get to the castle, and they rescue Sindel. But it doesn't end there. No, they go back to the village, and uh, Tarek, which is the bad guy, along with all his thugs, they plan this full on assault. Um, and I guess I kind of skipped over the whole reason. They're looking for this thing called the power. Um, which I, I don't even remember. And I just watched this stupid movie. I don't even remember exactly what it ended up being the power. I don't either. But what, why do you totally skip the witch who could oh, friggin yeah, turn into sure. a bird? <laughs> it was very like, like Willow ish or very, uh, right. Yeah. It was very, yeah. It reminded me a lot of eighties movies that were popular at the time. Yeah. So there's a lady and I did skip over her and I skipped over the song. We could and, skip over the movie. That would be great too. Yeah, we could. <laughs> um, and then they just have this big battle at the very end that's very similar to like the battle on Endor from Return of the Jedi. You've got Ewoks screaming and swinging on vines and biting legs. Were they taking Were they taking down giant war machines as well in this show? No, I don't remember that. No, you know what I like uh, in Return of the Jedi. One of my favorite scenes now when I get older is when the Ewok dies. I like yeah, I, mine too. I, like that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, when she's trying to like yeah. drag him or trying to yeah. wake him up to come on, let's go. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, that was great. It yeah. was a great touching moment for a child to go through. Well, there's two good moments, realization, good life that lesson life right is there. Finite. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So you should. There's a moment in Caravan of Courage where that one axe throwing Ewok. I don't even remember his name, but he bites it at the very end. Sounds uh, like gets something a whole bunch I would. Of rock do. Yeah, that's that's how. You know what? They could have saved everybody an hour and a half of misery if they would have just had Wicket bite it right off the bat in this movie. No, that's true. And then just roll the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Story by George Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> if you, uh, you didn't know any better, I, I would say we we just don't like anything. It's just, that's probably it's true. Just, these that's movies are so bad. They were bad. They're, they're not good. Here's here's two more things that I just to note. Like the, the one of the good things that they did use John Williams music in Caravan of Courage for one particular scene. Of, it was a segment maybe 10 seconds long. They played the bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba da 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 dum That particular, I forget whatever that is, but that's the Ewok song, right? They actually used that in Caravan of Courage. It never came back up in that movie. And it doesn't come I'm up. I'm surprised he didn't ask for that to be taken. I know. Out. Why didn't they use that music, though? That's what I didn't understand. Like, I guess they couldn't secure the rights. I don't know. Would that music have helped this movie? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another one that here's another one that I'm just like, why? You know what helped like this, this movie? When it ended. <laughs> yeah. When it, the credits rolled. <laughs> credits. So the sound effects. So the blaster bolts in Caravan of Courage were I'm from the movie. I'm glad you're so enthusiastic, enthusiastic about talking about this because I am. You know, you sound like you're like ready to just like you're you're into it, man. No, oh, well, yeah, I just I got to be. I, well, no, I'm just saying, I admire that, sir. Well, listen, yes, you're you're really making you're making lemon bars out of, out of lemon, <laughs> lemon <dude>. bars, like, <laughs> not, lemonade. not even lemonade. You're just skipping right over <laughs> right, to, to the bars, buddy. All right, so listen, the laser bolts <laughs> in in Caravan of Courage. <laughs> okay, Dad, I'm listening. They're there. I'm gonna go dad mode on you guys. So the, the the laser bolts in, in Caravan of Courage are from the movie. The only problem that I had with it was at the very end when Mace is using it to fire at Gorax. He's the sound effect is an X-wing fighter 
laser bolt. And I'm getting super nerdy here, and I'm probably so you get you know, hung up on these little things like oh, that. Oh no, right? that bothered me. See, I don't know why it's this like would the bother stuff you. Doesn't bother yeah, me. Yeah, because this movie is horrible, and you shouldn't even recognize it. So why <laughs> even worry? Your about? Rifle produce that sound. You That's should be more was... annoyed about the lightsaber being hucked over Luke's shoulder than this. No, this is highly more offensive. <laughs> no, this no, is no, way no, more offensive. Not. No, it is not How even is close. This more offensive. Luke throwing the lightsaber How? over his shoulder. Him actually, the worst crime. In all of the Last Jedi, is him nursing the the sea cow or the oh, face whale? I puke in my mouth just thinking about exactly, it. Exactly, sir. So mm. how can you defend? How can you get upset over this little laser snafu? You know, I you, did you get mad? Are you the guy that got mad when Luke's <laughs> lightsaber would deactivate before it was un, un ignited when he was walking out of the cave in, in on Hoth? You know, right. did, did that bother you? I bet it did. Yeah, it, it did. Of course, of course, it did. It bothered you. Yeah. yeah. You know what bothers me though? Oingo boingo. That bothers yeah. me. Well, but that's you know, true. You know. <laughs> I don't mind that. Durant Durant. Yeah. But anyway, uh, continue <laughs> with your sermon. Sir. All right. So the other here's the last the last piece, and I'll shut oh, up and move on. Can't I wait. promise. <laughs> the other problem favorite is, part of the show. <laughs> here comes now the battle for Endor, <laughs> and they changed all the the blaster bolt sound effects. They were no longer the originals, and they came up with these weird sounding. I don't know. Uh, no offense to like Battlestar Galactica or anything else, but it was a very 70s-ish sounding ray gun uh, sound effect that they use. But I'm like, the, the problem with this is, I don't know, again, could they not secure the rights from whatever company? Oh, wait, it's them. It's Lucasfilm. Why would they not use the music, the sound effects, anything to make, to kind of just help give this movie theory. something more than what it had? I just doesn't, uh, judge never just, did make judge sense just didn't give a I have crap. A, that. <laughs> yeah, I think George like saw this early on and he went, eh, let's go ahead and just pull all the sound effects. You guys can do your own. Cause I want to get as far away from this pile of burning garbage as fast as I can. <laughs> it's a dumpster fire. It really is. Yeah. This, all right. Both of these movies are just terrible. Like <laughs> I just, I tried, I really did. And see, just, it's, not unwatchable. Even, it's not even with a, it's so bad. It's good type of thing. No, like it's just no, got nothing no. of bad. that. Yeah. It's just bad. Like the last Jedi is just bad. There's nothing good about it. It doesn't make no. you feel good. It doesn't add. It doesn't add anything to the canon. Exactly. It detracts. Fr- it detracts from the characters. And it, to be honest, it detracts from the franchise. Exactly. Yeah. Like the last Jedi. <laughs> I I'm don't, sorry. I thought we were talking the last I'd Jedi. Go, I don't know if I'd go. Though, See, the audience really. They're not going to like me anymore. But anyway. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> They've already turned this off. Yeah. I, I don't um, even think they like me to begin. I don't even like me. So, hey. Pff, okay. Yeah. That's uh, all right. So back to the book. Uh, okay. So going. So they covered that. Like we turned a, a literally a eight word sentence into about an, a 30 minute segment. But um, well, they they go on. And he mentions that there. He mentions Lady Hawk as well. And, and we're not going to talk about Lady Hawk because I've. Got something special pan- planned for like the Richard Donner film. Oh, uh, what have we here, Lady show. Hawk? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Um, but he says, uh, "You'll think he, the line in that particular uh, part of the book says, you'll thank me one day.' Wait and see. Lady Hawk is canon, and then he says, canon was a term we used to classify any movie, book, game, song, or TV show of which Halliday was known to have been a fan.' Um, so I want to touch on this, and it's not in the show notes, and I apologize for kind of going off the mm. uh, book uh, record here a little bit uh, or off script. The uh, so this is a, was really kind of a reference, I think, for what we used to have in the old expanded universe where we had the different levels of canon. So for those of you that are not familiar with Star Wars and the different levels, prior to Disney taking over, uh, there was something called the Holocron. And the Holocron was all of the data, knowledge, the stories, much of uh, much of what we just talked about with, you know, the the, the movies and the, the TV movies that we just talked about as well. Uh, the comic books and everything was all kind of kept Right. in this thing called the hologram, which is basically a database. And every one of these things had a different level that was assigned to that. So the highest level was con- was called G canon. And this was canon. This was like the movies themselves. Um, not did not include Battle for Endor or um, Caravan of Courage, nor did it include the Star, Star Wars holiday special. But the actual movies were all considered G level. And this is all stuff that was the G was for George Lucas. So it was anything that was uh, blessed by him said to be uh to be you know official kind of thing the next level down was t canon so that was all the television stuff uh you had c canon which was continuity canon so this is where we found a majority of all of our uh books so everything that was in the expanded universe um or what we call i guess legends now today or garbage uh, as i call it comics yeah anything like video games all that stuff was kind of Mar-Jade, C level. Ter- totally garbage 
Garbage. Mm. Actually, I like Mara Jade. Mara Jade. Who doesn't like Mara Jade? Mara Jade. Like Wando. B- yeah, no, yeah. I know. Mara Jade, better than L3. I'm making a t-shirt that says that. Right. I'm wearing that to <laughs> <Okay>. celebration. <laughs> um, um, there's two more left. There was S Cannon, which was secondary cannon. Or sexy um, cannon. That, yeah. Sexy cannon. Uh, I don't know what I'm was in that, to be honest. Such a yeah, jerk. you are. Yeah. And then yeah. N Cannon was last one. But so anyways, I, I wanted to just cover that real quick. Um, because it was always something that was, when we talked about it prior, again, prior to Disney, this was always like, oh man, that's not, you know, that's not G canon stuff. You're talking T canon. I only involved in G and T, man. That's where I was. That's, that's all that mattered to me. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was kind of getting at is that there was these, still not what you would call that. Well, the last Jedi just doesn't exist in my mind, but you know. Crowley, did you get into (laughs) any of that? (laughs) You guys never read, (laughs) you guys never read any of the books? Oh, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, we read. Oh, yeah, I read. You know, the Fate of the Jedi series. Now that's that's a work yeah. of garbage. Like, Ugh. <sighs> but anyway, God. I like Ben. You just don't like anything. I like anymore, ben, ben Skywalker. He was cool till they killed him off. Right. Mm. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I got into it, but I didn't care about the levels. But we got we got Psycho Ben I, Ben if, Skywalker Solo. Yeah. Yay! If I liked, <laughs> if I liked it, I liked it. I liked what I liked, and I didn't. I don't care. <laughs> What I didn't care what was canon and what wasn't because it was fun and it didn't matter. It didn't matter what you saw on screen, on the big screen, right? And if you saw something that tied in, great. But if you didn't, who cares? Me. Like, that's how I looked at the prequels. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, like, I, 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 Crux, I, I agree with you. Like, in the, like I said earlier, in the early days, that's what it was. It was all fun yeah. and, and whatever. And then things get a little more serious, obviously, with the prequels and... And stuff. And it, I don't think it got to this level until Disney bought it, and a lot of people no, just got it, all no, kinds of hurt about it. No, it was it was getting well. It's always been evolving, but now it's just like all out. We hate each other, no matter what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's just yeah, the way think, it is. I mean, if you're going to talk fandom, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't disagree, but I mean, if a story's good, a story's good. If if a, if writing is good, then writing is good. Yeah, I don't. I, at this, you know, at that point, I don't care if the overall story arc that I'm reading in 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 books is really good and it's got me hooked and it's got me going. I want to buy the next book. I want to buy the next, you know, the the next comic book or I want to, whatever it is. Then it's good. It's good to me. I and I don't need to discuss it with other fans and be like, this should be canon. I don't know. I don't care. If it's good, it's good, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna enjoy it, and that's uh, why I didn't like Caravan of Courage or uh, Battle Thunder. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, because <laughs> yeah, you. you know, as much as I enjoyed some of the trash that was the EU and some of the characters and stuff, the one book that I considered canon was the Darth Plagueis novel. That was it, because George actually had his hands involved with that. You know, so that was yeah. to me that was. That was canon, and, and, you know, that that was one of those things where I think, Albert, like, kind of like your question is, well, like, what are you considering canon? If you're picking from this canon, that canon, whatever, and what you're going to piece together for your own, that was one of the things that I took from the lower tier and put it up into the G canon, so to speak, and, mm-hmm. and went from there. So if that's what your yeah. question was kind of getting at. but So yeah, then if, sort of. Snoke, if Snoke turned out to be Plagueis, oh, I'd, you'd... you'd that would be You'd like that it. would be awesome, but you know, yeah, okay. Ryan Johnson and crew don't have an imagination. <laughs> they they don't. They, that's not. Don't, that's not where I was going oh, for. Oh, I wasn't well, going they, for. Well, this is what you're gonna get. So <laughs> I'm gonna release as part of the show notes a drinking game. <laughs> every time I <laughs> where <laughs> mention the last. Every episode. time Mike mentions Ryan Johnson, take a shot. Every time we hear about Luke, take a shot. Anyways, no. Kathleen the, Kennedy uh, is you need to take a yeah. shot of whiskey. Happy birthday, right. Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, why would why. Why? 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 So, so for, listen, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a gripe. I got a gripe. And I don't mean to interrupt oh, this show, but I'm going to interrupt this show. I got to edit, so we're going to, you know, it's my time I'm wasting at the end of the day. <laughs> Yo, uh, hey, um, it's, your, it's, your, it's your bill, buddy. Exactly. Meter's running. So I don't understand why fan sites and podcasts and that on their social media wish these actors happy birthdays. Maybe one will maybe tweet it or like it or whatever. I, I don't, they don't care. Why should you? I don't get. I don't get that. That drives me nuts. Like they don't. Then they're, they're busy living their lives. They, yeah, it's just, I, I, don't I, 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 don't, I don't know. Kathleen Kennedy Kennedy is busy driving Star Wars into the ground. Exactly. Thank you, Crowley. She does not have time. Exactly. She does you know not what? Have time you know to... what would have been great? Because I'm. Because I'm. I think we've all established <laughs> I'm an a hole. 
is if I was Bob Iger, I would say, hey, Kathleen, come here. I got a birthday present for you. Is your, is your pink slip. Bye. That, that's you know. how I am. But, you know, and that, the truth is, I don't want to get into that because it, well, let's move on with the show. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. But go. You're just going to edit all this out, right? No. No, but go ahead, okay. Albert. <laughs> Continue. The, um, Continue. All right. So let me let me take it back to the book again. Yes. So the reason I brought this up was because I, in the book, when he mentions that they have these, um, that they're talking about canon, I think this is really where they're pulling it from because it's, you know, like kind of much like we just did in talking about what things meant to us and what was real, what was not. Oh, and back to Crowley's point, that's exactly what they're talking about in this book, right? They get into this in the next couple of uh, pages they're having this lively, you know, debate about whether or not something was, uh, uh, something that a Gunter needed to pay attention because Halliday, you know, liked it, or there could have been potentially Easter eggs or clues in that stuff. And that's kind of like what we were doing just now, right? We were arguing about whether or not, you know, they get into the whole thing about Lady Hawk and they mentioned Highlander too. And some of this will cover up in the next episode, but, um, you know, this is, this is that whole, this whole debate that you see in the book really stemmed, I think, from this, right? This whole canon thing that came from the Star Wars that was predicated in the Star Wars universe or came, existed back in the Star Wars days prior to Disney coming on. So, um, all right, let's get to, oh, right, let's make a pack, right? <laughs> yep, First, yep, yep. from here on out, we're not talking about Star Wars anymore. Can we agree? Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Agreed. I have retired from Star right. Wars podcast and I'm good with it, but, uh, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so the, <laughs> The next line the he's talking about. Sparks. I'm sorry. Yeah, here we go. You've already broken it. The uh, he's talking about um, Astro Smash. So they bring up the fact that you know they they they're playing this game here. Um, and I had I had put out uh, as a challenge, I guess, that to see if maybe you guys had get it would get a chance to either play it or go do some research on it. Or is this one of the games you had ever heard of? Honestly, going in prior to the novel. No. Nope. But here's the funny thing. I'm looking at the screenshots on Google here. I don't like all these screenshots do not look familiar and it looks like a space invaders rip off, but there's this one shot. It looks like missile command. There's this one shot. It looks like it's a mesh of Pac-Man and, and something else. I don't know, but it looks yeah. familiar to me. I don't know. It's weird, but uh, yeah, no, this doesn't, this doesn't ring a bell to me at all. Yeah, it was, I, I like the name Astromash because, because they kind of, smash it together a bunch of genres in this in this game yeah i mean you had like so the only reason i even know so i didn't have this game all right i didn't have it and i think i mentioned on a previous episode that um i'd worked for a, a number of years at a used video game store and this is where i had a lot of exposure to to a lot of these games because it would come in and you know you're sitting there and there's nothing to do you do oh, let me pop in the odyssey too and see what this was all about or let me pop in the television and play this game um or whatever and this is one of the ones that, uh, because of having worked there, I got a chance to see it. I don't know that I really played much of it because honestly, once you get into it, you're like, oh, okay, it's a, you're on a, it's a fixed shooter. You're moving left and right and you've, you're like shooting like meteors and, uh, bombs. And I don't, even, I think there's a spaceship. I don't know. There's something else that kind of comes down. So it's very similar to like maybe space invaders, right. Or, um, missile command, one of those types of games or just again, moving left and right and shooting stuff. Um, but it was one of the more popular games that came out on the Intellivision. And I knew that only because when we, when I would open up that drawer to look at all the, uh, old video games that we had for Intellivision, we had rows and rows of Astro Smash and it never, I never understood why. Um, but it turns out that this was like in the top five games of all time for the, for the Intellivision, it sold that many copies. And I think at one point there was something that they were doing that where they were giving out this cartridge as well. Uh, which is why it was such a huge hit. Um, it was put out uh, by Mattel. Uh, it came out on the Intellivision, obviously. Um, it came out on the Atari 2600, and then Mattel had something called the Aquarius, which is a video game system that just really never took off, uh, did horribly well, did horrible. Uh, but it was released on all three of those consoles. Um, they went so far, in September of 1982, Mattel actually held an event called Astro Smash Shootoff. Uh, they held it in a hotel near um, the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, and basically said, look, we're going to have this open kind of tournament con thing where you can kind of you can uh, enter, come play the game. And the winner would get like twenty five thousand dollars. This is the first e well, sport. No, I don't know if it was. No, it's see, more so like tournaments. It was more like who's the best. Yeah, it wasn't. 
it certainly wasn't esports in the in, in the sense that can we not even call today. that esports? It's like calling golf and bowling a sport. <laughs> oh, it's come a game. On. I get that. Yeah, but, but there's yeah, but it's competitive. I, I get that, but I don't know. But anyway, it's like saying NASCAR is a sport. It's driving. <laughs> oh, you just doing left turns. All how many thousands of people? That's all right. I've this picked on. Well, NASCAR. You're giving the show way too much credit. We don't have hundreds of thousands of I've, people listening. I've, I've picked on NASCAR since my brother got into it all those years ago, and you know it's just driving in circles all day. Now, granted, I will admit driving 100, 200 miles an hour takes skill. I'll give you that. Skill. Yeah. And just yeah, like sure. bowling takes skill and. And golf takes skills, oh, which I, I don't can't have. You just equated bowling to NASCAR. But let's be fake. Let's it's all really, one of the same. Seriously, it's right. just a game. It's not a sport like well, you know, like, football or something. I don't, but hey, you go ahead. I don't know if you were going to mention this, Albert, but in television is coming out with a brand new console. I was not going to mention that, but we can talk about that. Well, I, I want to yeah. say this. It seems well. First off, the box art. Yet again, Albert, this is one of those things that's. It looks great. And it seems the T-shirt's a pretty popular thing because Sheldon Cooper was wearing it in an episode, and there seems to be a few other movies where where this shirt pops up. So just a yeah. heads up. So, but anyway, I mean, in the Intellivision, the the dark circles that are the Intellivision community or underworld, that is the underworld <laughs> of, of video games, that, which is known as the Intellivision circles. Um, yeah, it was a, it's a pretty big game. It was a big game. They must have um, gangs too, Intellivision yeah, gang. They do. The, they uh, go to esports events yeah, and yeah. yell, "This is a real sport!" <laughs> <laughs> so they had seventy-two. Let me go back to nineteen eighty-two. So oh, they had great. seventy-two contestants that that participated, and the winner was a person, uh, Manuel Rodriguez from Stockton, California. Um, I thought you were going to say you. To be honest, I that no, was, was not me. I, was, I wouldn't <laughs> have been surprised at all. But no, I I was was I in Texas? I wasn't even in Texas at that time. But um. <laughs> So he scored 100, uh, 835,180 points uh, in a 60-minute time limit and won $25,000. Um, he's quoted as saying, I'd sit in front of my TV and play until 3 a.m., put it on pause, wake up at 10 in the morning, and start again. So he didn't even – he bought, he found out about the contest. He bought the video game system, bought the game, played it for – I don't even know how long. It just sounds like this is all he did outside of you know pooping and eating. He played this game. Went down to Houston, <laughs> won his twenty five thousand dollars, and then he used the money. And it's and it, this was a, an interesting part because in the book we know that when they when Ogden uh, Og and Halliday made their millions, they went out and bought cars. This kid bought a Trans Am, and he said, "quote with a new radio and everything." So he used the money to buy a Trans Am and then used the rest for for college. So well, I'm gonna be honest, uh, not yeah. a bad ride, not a bad ride. No, no for sure, but. You do realize that there are people that do this even today on YouTube for no money. They just want they just want the record. Yeah, like the uh, and there's the, actually there's a the there's a Mario video Brothers game. Thing, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a video game Hall of Fame here in, in, in the great Corn State of Iowa, the Hawkeye State. Sounds uh, fitting. That, like that, that would be where it is because <laughs> there's nothing else to do well, but video games. Thanks. Yeah, I, no I appreciate that. Uh, I've, I think uh, I've but, managed to upset just about everybody tonight. <laughs> But go ahead. <laughs> we'll get there. But that's, I mean, they still do this today where they'll get the arcade, uh, the arcade game or the, the Intellivision game or the Nintendo game, and it'll be the original one and they'll go to town for hours and they'll stream themselves doing this now on Twitch. There are YouTube videos. And then this guy in, in I don't even remember what town, I think it's Fairfield, but I'm not a hundred percent certain uh they uh he goes and he 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 makes sure that it's all done right and then yeah, he verifies it galaxies and, yeah but he doesn't yeah but he does it like these people do it for no money this guy did it at least for twenty five thousand, which in today's money is what 100 150 yeah maybe i so, don't know what that would trend i don't know i i can't do maths but yeah i mean well, so if you're talking about walter day because we did cover we did cover twin galaxies and walter day i think in in episode one uh, maybe episode yeah. two. I don't know. One of those early, or maybe it was zero, to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. They still do this. Um, and there's but a whole for no money for no for money. No I mean, we can get into the whole controversy guy. with uh, Mr. Billy there. What happened with him? But um, <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, so Astro Smash. Um, there really wasn't. I don't know. It's it wasn't a great game in my opinion. I'm probably pissing off people no. here that liked it, but it was very similar. It was like their first. And television's first, like, arcade-ish type game. And they're very proud of it. And 
it's got a huge fan following and we know that. Um, so no offense to the game. And it was just, you know, it doesn't mean it's not a great game. It's just just, not my cup of tea. No, not really. No. So from there, the next one, and this is like, I mean, we're, we're, we're not even like, this is, this episode's really going to be like two pages of the book because he immediately goes into, uh, the quote where he says, Shirley, you must be joking. And he says, no, I'm not joking. And don't call me Shirley. Um, so that's actually a po- directly pulled, not verbatim, because I think the line in the movie is, um, Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley is the line. But this is from 1980s airplane movie. Um, so we're going to talk airplane because to for me, honestly, this is one of the like my top comedies. I'm not going to say it's number one. It's probably my top 10. If I had to be honest, it's could even be my top five. I didn't put too much thought into that. Uh, but man, this movie for me still holds up really well in terms of the delivery of the lines, the comedy, the references. Well, the cast um, was the cast pretty, itself. Pretty, yeah. Well, very yeah. eclectic cast that worked very well together. I guess you could say, cause actually my favorite scene in, in part is actually what you just said, Albert is, is the, uh, don't call me Shirley. Um, yeah. But also even the autopilot thing when the guy blows up. Yeah, I, auto, I, I, auto the autopilot. I, I don't know why. It just always made me laugh as a kid. I, it just was the funniest thing in the world. Um, but the whole thing was, it was, uh, it was just funny. I, I don't know why it was, it is one of those, it's not like in the top, you know, 10, but well, maybe it is in the top 10. It's just one of those things you could turn it on at any moment and you'd, you'd stop and actually watch it and laugh your whole way through. It's like one of those things you come across on like, I don't know. I'm like the comedy channel or whatever. You'd flip it on and you'd see it and you'd just, you'd watch it and just laugh and, and forget things yep. for a little while. It's that funny. It's just, it was good. It, it's, uh, makes me it miss builds. those early days of comedy back in the day in the eighties, those comedian movies, uh, comedy movies, good stuff. Yeah. And this is, this is one of those movies I think for me that is just, it builds, right? It starts off funny. And as, if you s- sit down beginning to end, you're in stitches by the end of it. Like you're laughing and you don't even know why you're laughing. And don't get me wrong. The movie's funny, but you're just, you've just built up this, it's just built up and, and it finally just all kind of comes out and you just keep laughing and, and at all these different things. Um, and you kind of almost need it because if you were to jump fast forward to like, where you know, uh, what's his name? Leslie Nielsen, Dr. Rumack comes in and says, just want to let you know, I just want to say good luck. We're all counting on you. Right. If you just jump to that moment and watch it, you're like, okay, that's kind of funny. But if you watch it from the beginning, and you get to that part, it's a different experience. At least it is for me. Um, but are we all in agreement here that this is uh, a pretty hilarious freaking movie that people need to see if they haven't seen it already? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, you should check it out. I think it's kind of timeless. You know, some of those comedian, comedic, uh, comedic movies you see, they don't really hold up that much, but this one does, I, I think. I mean, yeah, sure, it's in the early 80s and 70s or whatever that, you know, the style and... and the things I think it's kind of a funny way to look at how things used to be, in a way, and it's just funny to me. I don't know. That's just my yeah. take. Probably. How about you? Is this something that yeah. you'd seen before? Or where does it rank for you? Oh yeah, no, I've seen this movie tons of times. I don't know. It's good. I, you guys, I, you guys are either like hot or cold on stuff, and I'm just like, meh. This is, <laughs> this is, this is. It's okay. It's uh, not. It's not the funniest movie of all time. Certainly funnier than the Last Jedi. No, you broke the rule. <laughs> you broke the rule again. Uh, but it's like not, I picked the wrong not, week to to quit right. talking about Last it's Jedi. Not, it's sniffing glue. It's, it's not <laughs> terrible. It's not terrible. It's good. I would put it probably terrible. in the top twenty-five. Top twenty-five. Okay. Well, that's top twenty-five. Well, what's your number yeah. one then? Of, of what my number one for comedy? Yeah. Ghostbusters. And I think anyone who argues with me on that, I'll fight you. I will fist fight you right All now. Right. Well, when I'm in Chicago and you're in Chicago, <laughs> put the gloves you on. You don't like Ghostbusters? No, I do. It's in the top 10. Okay. I'm just, you know, right. it's not. Yeah, we'll cover that one. You said you wanted top to fight. 10? You just wanted to fight. And I'm like, all right, let's go. I'm a grumpy old man. Well, I'm ready to want to fight, period. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to fight anybody these days. I think the gags, I think they do a really good job. And this is probably one of the first comedies, at least that I can remember that, that does it, where they have running gags throughout the whole the whole movie and i it's probably my favorite one like because you asked in the show notes you said you know what's your favorite scene i don't really have a scene it's the it's just the running gag where every time he starts having a uh, a flashback the person next to him kills <laughs> he himself, kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
like because yeah, lady... everyone's been in that situation on the plane <laughs> yeah. or on a on a bus where somebody just won't shut up, right? Or a podcast, and you're just like, <laughs> uh, how do I hang myself? <laughs> well, right that's, now? No. that's what they're doing right that's now. That's what Mike's doing right now. Yeah. He's <laughs> there are people hanging themselves literally mid show because uh, they're tired of hearing about lunch today. Ah, the, uh, even, I got you even saying it, but you know, go ahead. Well, you yeah, know, I broke the rule, but um. So yeah, and and like it starts off with the lady, she hangs herself, and then you got the guy who uh, he got this like, I guess he's like a Japanese soldier who performs like seppuku like right there in front of everybody. Yep, right there, loved it. Uh, you got the <laughs> the 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 sick guy or Sikh, whatever I I forget how to say that, but he's got the turban Seek. on and yeah, Sikh, and then he throws the gasoline on himself. And he's about to light himself on fire, <laughs> yep. and then they call him back to the to fly the ship, and he kind of like you know gives this huge sigh of relief, and then forgets to put the match out and blows himself up anyways. But, um, uh, but yeah, they, they do have a lot of those running gags. Uh, this was one of the first movies too, that did like a lot of spoofs. Like they, there's, you know, the very beginning when they have a, one of the flashback scenes where they show, um, Ted Stryker and Elaine Dickinson on the beach, right. It's very similar to like Greece that had just come out, you know, a couple of years prior to that, uh, with Sandy and, um, what, what's, John Travolta's character in Greece. I'm John Blank. John Travolta. Oh, <laughs> Danny Zuko. <laughs> so Danny and 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 uh, Sandy are on the beach, right? And they're having that yeah, kind of loving moment. Why are we moment. talking about that movie now? I mean, right. we, why well, we, we can? All we, we do is talk about garbage on this show now. I don't understand. <laughs> so, like, I thought I wasn't going to say I that because I didn't want to be negative. I thought, but man, I thought we were seriously? discussing the book, which is good. But apparently, we keep talking about crap. I don't understand. Yeah, how that, no, that's, that's 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 part of the show. Yeah, uh, no, Mike. well. Oh, well, I yeah, shouldn't so, be on part three. <laughs> yeah. So they have these, <laughs> the mic's just wanting out. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, I didn't want to do part two here because of my negativity, but someone clubbed me over the head and dragged me here. But, yeah, you know, literally. <laughs> um, but I'm not. I'm happy they, to be uh, here, though. I am. They, uh, they spoof that one. They spoof um, Saturday Night Fever in the dance scene. Yes. That right was when great. they have a flashback and. Um, you know, he starts doing disco dancing, that kind of thing. <laughs> when um, he says, when he's, when he says, but fate, fate had my back that day or whatever. And that the guy get, that she's yeah. dancing with gets stabs in the back and she starts doing the she's dance trying, moves yeah. to mimic. He's trying to mimic. <laughs> he, he's trying to tell her to pull the knife out of her back. And so she thinks, oh, that's the move. And so she sticks her thumb out. It's kind of pointing yeah. at her back. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, that scene is in the movie too, in Ready Player One, the movie, uh, that same exact thing. Uh, Stan Alive comes on and then. The whole dance board lights up, which I know Crowley hadn't seen the movie, so I don't want to spoil anything there. No. You, already, um, you already did. That's all right. Yeah, cool. I did. Yeah. The uh, it did spoof like the old uh, what was the was it what was the airplane movie that was supposed to be like a? You guys remember that movie from like nineteen seventy eight seventy? No, ah, uh, can't remember the name of it, but it was like a supposed to be like a serious movie where something happened at an airplane port or airline. I don't. know. Anyways, they were, it was it was kind of spoofing that. And um, spoof Jaws and when the movie Jaws, first yep. opens. Yeah, yeah. I love that where the plane, the 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 fin of the plane is just. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. I, I now sitting here talking about it. I probably top ten. See, look, it moved from top twenty five. Oh, wow, 20 to what top a big 10. jump! Well, let's talk about it more. Do we get it up to your top five here? It's not going to happen. Um, what about it's better than Ghostbusters two? I'll give you that. Yeah, I would. Yeah, definitely better than Ghostbusters yeah. two. For sure. Um, one of the scenes, so I, I asked some of what your favorite scenes and, and lines were. Um, for me, I think the uh, that whole scene at the beginning where you've got the the red zone is for, you know, a loading and unloading <laughs> pad, the white zone. And then she, you know, they get into that whole argument. Uh, he's like, don't tell me what zone is for loading and unloading. Listen, Betty, don't start up with your white zone beep again. That whole thing was a uh, funny story on that one. Those weren't actors. Originally, I think they had brought in some voice actors to do it and they weren't getting what they wanted. So they actually went to a real couple, a married couple, and brought them in to record those lines. So that's uh, probably some deep rooted uh, angst that well, you're it hearing. It went pretty dark because she was like, you just want an abortion. You just want me to have an abortion. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, yeah. holy cow. Yeah. It's got dark quick. I don't remember that. <laughs> Uh, that was a great scene. Um, I really enjoyed the jive talking scene. Uh, which is the actors were Al White <laughs> and Norman Alexander Gibbs. They uh, there's a there's some back uh, BTS stuff that's out there that you can watch. Where you know originally the director, so the writers were uh, Jerry Zucker, Jim Abrams, and David Zucker, or Zaz is what they they kind of went by. But they had originally wrote that, and they didn't know what Jive you know sounded like. It's not a language; it's just 
you know, it's kind of like words here and there that are intermixed with, you know, everyday speak. Uh, and so they tried to take a shot at it, even though they didn't know what it was. They, they, they make the joke about there were three Jewish guys that thought they were, you know, taking a shot at trying to write jive. And um, when the script came out, they inter- they had Al White and Norman Alexander Gibbs come on to do the uh, the reading of the lines. And they had already come up with their own uh, language, their jive language. And so they just started going at it. And that's how they got the role. They were like, yep, you got it. And so the, all that stuff that you see in the movie were those two actors that had come up with it. But the best part is when uh, What's Her Name gets up there and starts, you know, speaking it as well. Um, and it's great that they put the subtitles in there, uh, because that just makes it even more funny when, when they're talking and speaking that. I wonder uh, if anybody would do that today. Yeah. And that's, we've talked about that. Like, this, like the, I said it earlier, I, it wasn't last show, but the one before, I think where I said the eighties really, it's like the older brother, they got away with every, they got to do everything, break a lot of these rules. And then we all had to pay the consequences, the nineties and there on, because I don't know that you can do some of this stuff anymore. Like to your point, maybe the, I don't know if that's where you're going, but. Yeah, there's oh, so much sure. stuff that happened. Like, that would be considered racist today. Yeah. You would upset a lot of different people. Yep. No, for sure. How about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Can we talk about him? Oh, oh he was the best. Like, <laughs> I, where the kids like my dad says, you don't even play defense. Yeah. He picks a kid up and he's like, look, kid, you he's like, <laughs> go back to your seat right now. I'm busting my buns every night. Tell your old man yep. to drag Walton and Lanier up the court in 48 minutes. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. He's so good in that movie. Yeah. And he doesn't really have many lines. No, he's just, it's I, he, like, he, he's the progenitor of uh, OJ Simpson. Like he's the, let's get the sports guy in here and see what he can do. And I guess OJ was just better at it than a Kareem. I wonder what his, like the background story is and why they got him. I didn't dive into that, but that would probably be interesting to hear. Um, in terms of why they went with him over anyone else or why they picked him to play a Roger. Is it Roger Murdoch? Was that his name? I forget now. I think so. I don't, I don't remember. All right. I, so I, it just, the, the blowing up the, the autopilot when he starts to deflate and then they're both having a cigarette afterwards. He's got, yep. this, the, the, he's got smile on his face. I think that's just, that's comedy that you just don't see anymore. It's, it's, I, I like it. It's hilarious. So is, so is this something that you guys watch as a kid though? Cause having seen it recently and I always knew, Again, this is one of those movies that I watched and was like, I really shouldn't be watching this because I know my parents would kill me. <laughs> but did you guys see this movie as a kid or was it later in life that you saw it? I I saw it as a kid, but I don't. <laughs> it was sneaking around behind my parents' back. Yeah. Mike, how about you? Oh, oh hey. Hi, how are you? Uh, yeah, of course. I watched everything <laughs> uh, when I shouldn't have been watching those things. I, I watched Johnny Carson when I was a kid and I shouldn't have been doing that. Uh, cause I'm a night owl. So I was up all those times and, and yeah, this is another one of those things that was on, I don't know where I saw it. It had to be on cable somewhere like HBO or whatever. And, and, uh, I just watched it and I loved it. And a lot of movies, I my saw. dad rented yeah, it. Yeah. Well, this was one of those movies he would rent no. that, uh, when, when he rented the, well, there's a sports the guy. In, so, you know, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> my dad's a funny guy. He just, <laughs> He just didn't want me, he just didn't want me to wave that geek flag because in his day, you know, the the guy who had the geek flag was also the guy that got pounded. Yeah. So he, that you know, he, I, he was just like, so I get that, but I mean, I was also a jock. So at what, once I hit about 16, it didn't matter. I let that thing fly and he was like, all right, cool. Do what you do. You do you. Yeah. Um. Before we move on, any quotes i know we've kind of thrown some in there and we've talked about scenes but just quotes because this, this movie's full of like one-liners i mean beginning to end no 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 really <laughs> really no all right so i've got some um, <laughs> well, what a shock. no i mean i <laughs> yeah. just said mine i mean you know no nah, there's so many more so uh like when so when elaine's asking about or the steward the uh, passenger says do you have anything light to read and she hands her this little piece of paper. Uh, and says, would you like a pamphlet? And she's like, famous Jewish sports legends. It's like a yeah. tiny little piece of paper. Yeah. Um, that whole bit about we have clearance, Clarence, Roger, Roger. What's your vector, Victor? Um, that's another one that's that's I think probably uh, famous. You hear it all the time. I, at least I do. I mean, I've got people that will just spout that out at any given moment. Uh, that do you whole, work in air traffic control? Yeah. No, okay. no, no. Yeah, like the that whole scene, the whole Clarence, Clarence, Roger, Roger, Victor, Victor. You don't. 
No, nobody I know says that. Oh, no, my goodness. Nobody. All right. No. Well, I got at least two people. One of them is my buddy at work. I can assure you that. Um, the uh, the whole scene with the the uh, captain where Joey comes in. He's like, you ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> you ever... <laughs> You ever hang around a gymnasium? I hope you don't say here? that to people. At <laughs> no, I don't. I hope, no, especially no, no, you're no. a Cub Scout leader there. I That's not one you'd want to right, quote Right, I'm just thinking, yeah, this is one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> like, yeah. What, yeah you no. ever <laughs> seen a grown man naked, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, that, you ever go into the locker room? Yeah, that's not going to fly. Um, no, no, yeah, no. Only kidding. Yeah, that's probably better, more of a scene. Not necessarily a quote. <laughs> I wouldn't go around spouting <laughs> that quote. But that whole creepy scene is um certainly it's that's kind of funny we you already said one of the ones mike the whole i picked the wrong day to quit smoking yep. i picked the wrong day to quit drinking amphetamines and then sniffing glue is the last one yeah um you know the whole we talked about uh that the surely you can't be serious it starts off by saying can you fly this plane and land it and then ted says surely you can't be serious and then uh rumax says uh, i am serious and don't call me surely um Let's see what else. Uh, all right, everybody getting crash positions. That was in the trailer, and everybody suddenly, you know, churns their bodies like they're about to crash. Oh, that was always cool. Um, and then there's uh, my favorite one though is when the they're back at the air traffic control and he pulls the map off and he shows it to the guy that's sitting there typing. He says, uh, "What can you make out of this?" And then he takes the piece of paper and says, "Well, I can make a hat, a brooch, a pterodactyl." No, yeah. Crickets. No. Like crickets. Yeah. Do you do you quote these things all the time at work? Like, yes, do you I and do. your buddy like it's airplane day? Let's get the quotes out. Yeah, no, we do. I Ooh, no, it's no, it's not even with this airplane guy. day. Yay. <laughs> like, do you turn to him and go, Johnny, have you ever seen a grown man <laughs> naked? naked. And I, do you do that? Have you do ever you, been in I, a I just, Turkish prison? <laughs> two hours later he's in HR. <laughs> yeah. Sitting with HR right. um, trying to explain Albert, myself. You well, you see, I do this podcast. Yeah, you want to explain yourself while you're telling another man. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? Uh, I'm just genuinely started. curious. I don't yeah, know if he right. has. <laughs> well, it's getting awkward, so let's move on. Um, Speaking of awkward, let's get to Howard the Duck. That's that's awkward. Yeah, well, this is it. We're going to end here on Howard the Duck. Uh, and to to kind of, so they're still in this kind of routing back and forth and, and you know, ribbing each other here. But um, he says the guy, they're talking about Halliday. The guy was a billionaire. He owed owned millions of movies, most of which he probably had never watched. He had DVDs of Howard the Duck and Kroll 2. That doesn't mean he liked them, and it sure doesn't hell doesn't mean he, they were canon. That's where we get our next one. So, And and really, I wanted to view Howard the Duck and Kroll, uh, and a good thing we didn't because we're at an hour and a half right now. Um, so we're going to start the next episode with Kroll, which I'm looking forward to. It's one of my favorites, but... Um, <laughs> Of course it is. But Why my, wouldn't it be? One of my other favorites is this movie, Howard the Duck. So we can finally, <laughs> finally agree on something good. Albert. You liked Howard the Duck? Oh yeah. All right, I do too. I've always I liked. Thought it held the, up well. I've always liked Howard the Duck because everyone always dogged it early on. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to like Howard the Duck, and I did. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty funny as a kid, especially you know, play duck that play duck scene. In the beginning, it made me laugh. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, that was funny. Oh, uh, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, that was good. And, uh, you know, um, all those other, and the, the, the yeah. duck in the bathtub. The duck boobs. Yeah, the Can duck. we just talk about duck boobs? Yeah, duck, duck boobs. The breasts, me. if you will. Uh, uh, that was all right, good so stuff. Howard the Duck came out in Matter of fact, I'm going to pull that up on duck <laughs> porn. Give Mike a couple of duck. minutes. He'll be back. Uh, right now. Yeah. Porn duck, duck. <laughs> so this is a movie that came out in 1986. It was directed by Willard. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say his name. I don't know if it's Hayuk. Yuck. I don't know what. Um, sure. It was produced by Gloria Katz. And I got something on. We can talk about her in just a second. But really the big one here, the big stinker is the fact that it was George Lucas's story that, you know, he was tied to this. And one of the questions that I threw out, at least for the show, was did he did he receive enough credit or did he not get enough credit for having a hand in this movie? Because I know we all say we like it and we're probably going to talk about this favorably. But let's be honest, it's not a movie that people talk about favorably. This you, we are you're in my world now right? where everybody hates something. This is one of those movies that most people just do not like. They, it's cringy. It's people don't like to talk about it. There's a lot of bad acting. There's bad scenes. I think at one point when they're in the diner and Howard is spinning around, you can see the shadow 
of the mechanism or whatever that arm is that's holding that uh, character there and to make him spin so that it's not telekinesis or you're supposed to believe it's telekinesis. But there, and just, there's another scene where you can see the boom mic in it. It's just a, it's a terrible movie. I love the freaking movie, but this is just not something that really went over well. And it, it, it made, it broke even at the box office. It was not uh, critically acclaimed by in any regards. Um, and it's one of the movies that gets Razzies and uh, just stomped on anytime it happens. But is this George Lucas's fault? Was he tied to this too much? Because he's, his name is all over it. And that was one of the selling points when it came out was, hey, look, you guys know George Lucas, right? He did that little, you know, Star Wars flick and Return of the Jada and all these other movies. And now look what he's doing, Howard the Duck. And it was a complete failure, right? So, well, is I, he deserving of that credit? Well, yes or no? He's deserving of the duck boobs and the play duck. Because <laughs> that is George right there. That screams George all over this is what I like to call George was maybe hanging around with Carrie Fisher too much. And they were doing a lot of things they probably shouldn't have, you know, illegal substances or something. I don't know. Some shrooms. Yeah, or something. Maybe. Because it seems it was it was bad. But you know what? It's it, This is what I liked about the movie. It, it's so bad that it's good. And I remember a few years ago, I watched it all the way through. I, I liked to watch it. It was maybe two years ago or something like that. It was on TV for some reason. And I watched it, and I actually got a kick out of Marvel actually putting Howard the Duck in in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy at the end. There, I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool, and I was hoping they were going to do another Howard the Duck movie, and uh, you know, bring him well, back. The, that, they still may. I mean, Seth Green is the guy that's doing his voice. Uh, well, then I don't want to see it. Then that's no, unfortunate. No. Then it's like why Sorry. don't we get Will Wheaton <laughs> while you're at it too, so I can hate it. But uh, right. But in any case, yeah, I George, I I think. I don't know. It, it it kind of fits with where he was in, in, you know, we just finished up with the Ewoks and now, you know, Howard the Duck and the way things that were, all worked. I think special effects wise, he's involved with it, so to speak, like his company in that. But other than that, I don't think he's really in into the story, I don't think. But I, I could be wrong because he does like comics. So I don't know, man. I'm going to I'm going to take this in a direction that I never thought that I, I would because I don't typically care for George Lucas all that much or his work. Okay. Get outside him off of, the show. Out, get him off the show. Of, get him off. Get him off. Of, I, I'm going to, you what, from this point on, you will not hear Crawley on the show because I'm going to edit him <laughs> out. Edit him right out. He is not even going to be around. So when Albert's talking to him, you're going to hear silence. So. Uh, no, go on, just, Crowley. I want to hear this. What do you get? Well, well they're not going to hear it, so of, that's fine. Outside of the, uh, outside of the original trilogy, I don't typically defend George Lucas that much just because I didn't like the prequels. I didn't really like anything that he's put out. Um, American graffiti, take it or leave it. Like, but so I just, he's not my cup of tea usually. Right, when first it comes off, to this you're a Star Trek stuff. fan who knows nothing. Um, that's okay. It, that's a fair, that's a fair, that's a fair, fair point. assessment. I just want the, the yeah. listeners to know where your anger that's, comes from. Um, and I'm not angry. all I'm going to say is, I love this movie. Listen, listen, <laughs> you picked this out of all these things. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's like Albert with Oingo Boingo. But, you know, the good news is, you know, a few more Star Wars movies under Disney and you're going to love George Lucas. So it's, but, right. it's good. Well, that's probably true. That's, that's probably accurate. Look, uh, Anytime you deal with a creative type, especially creative type, the mind of George Lucas, you're going to get some of this kind of stuff. He's very juvenile and creative types tend to be that way because they they're very imaginative. They're very uh, their imaginations are very vivid. Right. So if he's he's constantly stuck in his adolescence. So this movie makes sense that way. And that's, mm -hmm. I guess, how I've always looked at it. And this, you know. It's it's just a fun movie. It doesn't have to make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't have to follow the same laws of physics and space and time that you know, just turn your brain off and enjoy the friggin' movie. Yeah, and you like, got, just, you have to do that for this one. You really do. But there's, there's a lot of people. You that, said that though. there's a lot of hate. No, there's not. And I think that if more people did that today, there'd be a lot less hate you know, in the Critters Star Wars too, community. You know, great movie. I liked Critters too. Yeah. It's another one. Last Jedi is not nearly as bad as some people make it out to be. Oh uh, no, it yeah. is. So it is. <laughs> I think. All right, we've all I, broken the rule now. <laughs> yes. Well, I just wanted to be. Part Are we of gonna have like a swear <laughs> jar? Are we gonna have a, like a Last Jedi jar where yes, we dump the Last Jedi yeah. jar? It'll go to a good charity. I'll be broke. So I just, you know, I think that there's a lot of people on the right that I see bring this movie up 
in like in terms of bestiality and i just roll my eyes i'm like no there's none of that in this movie there is none there was no like if you thought there was sexual tension between leah thompson and howard the duck like you're wrong well just, i just might have been a little it. bit more than jabba and say leia but or ula but yeah. you know hey george is a, so when you see george has yeah, a so when you see weird imagination well, when you see Leah Thompson in her in her skivvy, like it's the same thing as as Leia in her slave outfit. It works for me though. Like it works for me. It, it worked. It worked for me then, and it works for me now. Play Duck, I man. watched this movie the other day, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I I just, I really enjoyed it, and I didn't have a like. I don't care that Lucas is attached to it or not. I don't care who who wrote it, who produced it. It's just a fun turn your brain off movie. Like I don't understand why everyone's got to hate on it. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the, some of the, I guess let's talk about the highs and lows. And I mean, I guess I can go into explaining the the premise of the movie. Um, but it's, I don't know if it's worth it on this one, but if, if you, especially <laughs> if you haven't seen it, uh, cause you're just going to be like, what are you talking about? Um, but highs and lows. So we talked about play duck magazine. I had that one down. I had duck boobs down. Um, those were the highs for I, me and Leah Thompson. Leah, uh, yeah, Leah Thompson. That's the high of this movie. I don't understand. Like her in her underwear. Well, how is that not the highlight of this movie? Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. <laughs> I was like, this was a family show, but it's it's gone no. so far off the rails now. The show is it's, never what it should be. It's just we should just so change. I, it to, I wish her happy birthday the other day on Instagram. Uh, her birthday was of course, uh, of course, you did. <laughs> like did she say? Is, did she say thank you? Uh, she or said was thank she you. It's been, I've been waiting for this all day. Uh, I got. I got okay, to be well, honest. Go. I feel a little bad saying that earlier now. Now that I know my my compadre here said that, now I feel now I feel a little bad about <laughs> well, that. Well, it wasn't it wasn't a Star Wars person though. Yeah, but it was, now, it was just Leah Thompson. Yeah, but no, but I have but, always had a crush on her. I mean, my wife oh, knows who it. Who hasn't? Yeah, I mean, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking that rocking hair she had in the movie there. You know. Big hair. Oh come that on! Was great. Yeah, that that was the eighties, uh, right? Yeah. Well, it was it was something. It was doing it for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like Doc, like Jennings always sounded like Cobra Commander to me when he spoke. Um, that was, you said yes. that like that's a bad thing. Well, it was just confusing for me as a kid because when this movie came out, I was really into GI Joe, and I kept thinking, "Is that Cobra Commander?" Listen to it again. Watch it and listen to it again. They are almost yeah. identical in terms of the way he You're- did his voice. Like I was trying to place that while I was watching this yesterday and I'm going, that sounds so, and you nailed it. That's exactly <laughs> who he sounds Commander, like. Yeah. Cobra Commander. Yeah. Cobra Commander. And I could just picture him on set, just doing these voices. And finally somebody went, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That. You got it. You know, uh, I had bestiality down and I had a question mark next to it though. Cause oh, I don't, I didn't pick I up, pick up it. on it as a kid, but it was weird because the whole scene, one, she's got almost nothing on. Uh, two, she's rummaging through his wallet and finds his little condom. That's not even packaged, which was always odd. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I don't want to just. We're not going to talk about the implications of that, are right? We? Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think that was and then to, prior just to that show what it was because I, I, for whatever reason, I don't think the audience would have understood what a small little anyway. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll move on from that. They had a there in in the scene. Was it just right before like they were um the the scientists came in on them? Didn't she like stroke his head and then his feathers like yeah were erect? Yeah. So, I mean, they, well, they yeah, played around that, with it. I mean, you can't say that they didn't, but they didn't go there. But it was yeah. enough to make me think, like, this is kind of, even as a kid, I thought this was weird. Like, this is not what mom and dad just talked about. And with then me. your parents is, are sitting there like, oh, sh- did I take them to a porn? <laughs> oh, no, no. You got to bleep that I, out, I'm, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm glad, <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because that's uh, my, this was, again, one of these movies that my dad would rent the VCR. And he brought it home and he brought this movie home and he's like, he saw the duck on the front and he's like, oh, the kids will like this movie. He didn't even look <laughs> like to see what it was rated. He just saw duck. Kids like a duck, like a duck puts it in. Duck boob comes on. Yeah. And immediately my mother's like, no, 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 no. You guys got to go upstairs. No, no, this is not a movie for you. And my dad's like, duck boobs are for duck me. Duck boob. <laughs> Right. So I had, a, you know, again, one of the movies that I had to sneak around and watch. Well, there's also a scene where like Howard. So, again, if you haven't seen the movie, sorry, but he gets a job, right? He gets a job working as a right. like some like, what is it? A, like a, a, a pool or a massage place, like a sensual. I think it's like one of those hourly motels, isn't it? Where I don't know. But at one point he, jump, he falls or gets into the pool with these this couple that's like just going oh, at it. Yeah. 
Well, he didn't get in. His his boss threw him in. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he that's right. He got thrown in. And there. then he threw his boss in like an open sewer. Like I couldn't figure out. I'm like, is this a mud room or an open sewer? I I don't want to know. Let's just move on with the movie. Like, yeah. Quack Fu Master, by the way. You know, well, he was the Quack Fu Master, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is the that's the original uh, uh, original Shack Fu. For those of you that didn't know, that's where Shack Fu came from. Was Quack Fu? Uh, was it from the video game? I don't know. Does, uh, don't you remember Shack Fu? Oh, yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I remember the video game. Taekwondo. It was terrible. Yeah. Everything Shaq touched was terrible back in the day. Even his rap album. Where did they go with Taekwondo? I don't know. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Taekwondo. Uh, that's what I call it. What yeah. call? <laughs> so this this movie, it starts with Howard like in, in Duck World and he gets sucked down to Earth and he meets up with, uh, what's her name's character? Leah Thompson, Beverly Switz, uh, Switzler is her name. Uh, I want to get into the band because she's part of this band called Cherry Bomb, which is a cool mm. name, I thought. Um, but they all did this acting. They all did the singing. Sorry. So all, all the the actresses that they hired to be part of the in those roles, including Leah Thompson, they all actually had to sing in this whole the song that they sang at the very end. Howard the Duck, which I actually really like that song. And it's as crazy as that may sound. But here's why I think and the 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 song the choreographing that they did and and uh all of the the recording and the practice sessions and everything else was all done by Thomas Dolby. You guys know who that is? Blinded me with science. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So they this is yeah. they brought him in okay. to do this. He wrote this song um and it turned out to be like one of the highlights for me I think at, at the very end. Um of all things. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not a huge Dolby fan. Like he did, he did blinded me with science. And I don't know that I could name another song that he did, honestly, but that, that particular song is really good. Which I think surprises it surprises me because you like horrible music. So I figured you'd, you'd have his whole collection. He probably no. wrote songs for Duran Duran and Oingo Boingo. No, he didn't. I mean, he, see, he's, he's pretty big. Um, sure. Sure. <laughs> He's in the uh, circle, he is. Yeah, All right. In the, in the television underworld. Yeah, television underworld. Um, Crimson Dawn. He's 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 still doing music. I don't know. I don't. I forget now where he's at. He's like a. Is he a still using somewhere. synthesizers? Yeah, he's super okay. into all of that. Well, well, then I think I I think we know what we need to do here, right? What, mm, which is that? Stop talking about the like, who. I don't know who this guy is, and he's still using synthesizers in in 2018. I don't. Oh man, synthwave is back, buddy. Haven't you heard the intro uh, to my show? Yeah, I no gotta I admit, I do. <laughs> that's probably my favorite part of editing the show is doing the intro, and then it just goes downhill from there. But <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's honestly probably fair. I get super hyped about the show, and then we start recording, and I'm like, no, why do we do this? Um, <laughs> that's every podcast. <laughs> Yeah. that's every podcaster after yeah but anyway yeah that's, um, i i can confirm that that is 100 percent accurate do we want to talk about tim robbins character filzy and his uh donald duck impersonation if you want it, yeah i got no problem with that what was wrong with it i don't know it's one of those scenes that everybody dogs and i think it's funny i it just is funny. think it's hilarious when he tries to like he doesn't know he's not getting he's like talking to him and initially when he meets howard and doesn't know how to you know, doesn't know if he understands English or not. And so when he's getting nothing from Howard, he defaults to trying to sound like Donald Duck, which I just, I don't know, tickles me. I think it's hilarious. I don't have a problem with it. So what What do we... I thought it was funny, too. I then don't, again, the, 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 I, we all agree it's a, one of those good, bad movies. So why are we talking about that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, I guess if you want... I don't know. I'm not even going to go there because this is just a fun movie. I mean, you could talk about social commentary. Uh, but it, it it serves no purpose with this movie. It's it's a turn your brain off, have fun, just enjoy the ride kind of movie. Yeah. Do you guys have any uh, famous or favorite lines, quotes from the movie? Not off the top. I don't top know if it's a quote, yeah. but when Leah Thompson gets in her underwear, that's pretty great. It's probably where. <laughs> it's only the, well, the fourth time we've brought that <laughs> no, up now. I, I'm big on play duck and the, the, the <laughs> duck boobs. <laughs> the duck boob. I'm sitting here talking about Leah Thompson in underwear, and you're like duck boob. And and quack foo is rather the way he delivers <laughs> that, you know, master of quack foo. It, it was funny. I mean, the whole thing is goofy. I mean, I'm glad I never did drugs because if I did drugs and watched that, my god, whew, that would be one yeah. wild ride. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's all right. I don't think I'd want to. Yeah, on. no. Um, I've, I've been known to quote, uh, in my, where I'm from, we don't say die. We say not my shorts. Um, I don't know. That line was always one that stood out for me. Uh, especially in, in the diner where he's, uh, what did he say? He's must have, he must have had the chili. See, uh, see you, that was more like an aliens line, right? Or an alien line. I don't know which one of those movies. See, you space balls. Oh That's no, you're talking about of. space balls. Yeah. I know what you're yeah. talking about. You quote yeah. a lot of bad movies, Albert. You really do. Like, yeah, well, this is, and they're good. This movies. isn't a quotable movie. Yeah, it's not. Really? Yeah, I don't I think, think it's, no. it's not up there in like, uh, like, uh, Star Wars or like, uh, no. Ghostbusters or Back to Boom the Future Saints. or something like that. Spaceballs. Yeah, this is not, this is not, this a is good not movie to quote. up there. And even Airplane, I would say it's not that way anymore. Like, no, it's lost like its the sleep. gags, you could do the gags on a daily basis sometimes, but like, not. No, not. I, I think it just highlights the whole. Hey, Johnny, have you ever been in a locker room with naked men before? Like, no, <laughs> don't. Yeah, Stop that doesn't have a shelf life over. that would last for like one liners. Like, you have to watch the movie to get it. Like, you couldn't bring that up unless I. No, it's just not. It's not gonna like work. If you're saying that in a park to your buddy. <laughs> No one's going to get the reference and you're going to get the cops called on you. And then you've got to explain to the cops, no, it's an airplane. And they'll, unless they're old like me. Yeah. And really, they, huh? they get it. Yeah. No. And then you're going to punch up YouTube, show them the clip. All right. Yeah. It's just too much hassle. If you're like duck boob, again, in the park, you're yelling duck boob. Not appropriate, man. Not I appropriate. am going to get a shirt with duck boobs on it. <laughs> Are you going to wear it to celebration? I will. Do and it. And I'll put, feel my duck boobs. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll uh, I'll wear that shirt with you. Excellent. Proudly. And then we're at the point yeah. of the show where Albert completely disowns me and Crawley. <laughs> <laughs> Remember at the beginning of the show when he said that he wasn't going to speak for us, but we might be back? I don't know. We're going to get asked back, yeah. Mike. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. How that yeah, goes. I know I'm um, not back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for for this movie, um, so we all agreed it was, and we're, I'm probably, we're over on time, to be honest. I'm not going to get into the whole storyline. Um, it is zany. You really, there's a huge level of suspension of disbelief that goes with the movie. You got to switch your brain off. Um, and I don't know, as a kid, I enjoyed this movie, but the, one of the questions I had on here was really like, who was this movie for? Was it for children? Cause no. now that I see it older, no, it wasn't. No, it was, but it, no, this was who like, was the audience. I think George was going for that maybe 20 to 30 something year old crowd that had a goofy perverted sense of humor like he really does like if you look at star yeah. wars there's all sorts of perversions in there that you could find if you really hunt them down and everything and he just mm -hmm. kind of threw it all on the wall in this one and and uh yeah i i think it was like one of those and then again you could think of it it's, and i don't and i don't know how i could tie the two in here it's like the clone wars like they didn't know who that show was for and even rebels to a degree although that seems to be more kid geared towards but like with the Clone Wars, it's like one minute they're doing kid stuff and then the next they're doing deeper story stuff for us old timers. So and they never could find their feet. This is kind of like that with the movie. Like, you know, George wants to be that goofy teenage humor, but yet he wants to tell a kid story at the same time. So it's I don't know. It's hard. I guess in those days, maybe this is the early on, like Pixar does the adult humor and kid humor and meshes it very well together. And maybe George was trying to do that and it just failed miserably on that account if you you know if you're a parent i guess you could say i don't know what do you guys think Pro? I, I don't i don't man again like this just goes back to you could do a lot of things in the 80s that you can't do today and this is this is one of those things i, I don't honestly i don't know how it got made because i don't know if he really had an audience in mind and i don't know how they pitched this like can you just imagine the pitch session like, no. We're, we're, yeah, yeah, I have a hard time. You're gonna we're gonna take a duck from another universe, and we're gonna use the multiverse theory. Who in the '80s is going? Yeah, I'm very familiar with the multiverse <laughs> theory. Cont continue. Yeah, I am on track right now. Not very many people, which is why they kind of had to explain it at the beginning of the movie because I could just picture, you know, whatever studio had gone, huh? Mm -hmm. What? But you're gonna get Leah Thompson in her underwear, right? Yeah. Yes, that is gonna be the highlight of the movie. Yeah, and people will be talking boob. about that here's for a, 30 years from now on a podcast. Here's a right. check for 10 million. Go do that now. Oh, and duck boobs? Yeah, oh, yeah, there's an extra million for that. 
Yeah, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a whole pornography uh, magazine based around ducks. All right, now we're up to twelve. Yeah, I just I don't <laughs> I don't I I don't know that he had an audience. He just had an idea to make try to make money. Well, and so and, we sk- we skipped over a part though because this is really it wasn't so George Lucas is what this wasn't his no he didn't, he didn't create, come up with Howard the Duck it, right yeah, this was a comic. a comic book that existed years ago he just pitched the idea of hey let's put this on and originally we kind of skipped over this part too it was supposed to be a cartoon Universal yeah, needed a summer movie to come out and so they decided like zero hour to plug forward with turning this into a live action movie. And kind of like what you're what saying now, they just kind of figured like out. heavy metal. Oh yeah, it probably would have to have been something like that, very similar. Like, yeah. so they basically took the idea, like a, a heavy metal type idea for a cartoon, and turned it into live action. Mm-hmm. Now, let, which let, could let, explain let the effects being the way they yeah. kind of are. And and Albert, like you talked about the boom being in the way and and stuff, and so that could be why it's the way it is. So anyway, if Howard would would have been animated. A la Roger Rabbit, would this movie have found bigger success? Yeah, I think so. But it costs more. And George isn't going to do that. And, you know, so. Which is why we got Ewoks instead of Whoopies. Correct. <laughs> See that? Bring it full Bring it all circle for yep. yep. Hip you. and the last Jedi stinks. But anyway. <laughs> Good night, everybody. All right. The, uh, the last thing I had, at least for this, is the legacy. And we talked about the... Howard the Duck is back, I guess. He, I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm using air quotes on that. He's not back. He's been in, like, you know, ancillary scenes, cut scenes, fan scenes, whatever you want to call those things from the new uh, Marvel Universe uh, movies. But um, the only other thing that really... So they never did a sequel to this movie, thank God. Um, but they did release a game for the Commodore 64. Uh, it was released in 1986 by Activision. Uh, it hit the C64. It was on the Apple II. And it was... Uh, it was kind of a sequel of sorts, but um, it was called, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Howard the Duck and the Volcano Island. Or oh, I thought it was s- Leah Thompson's Underwear. Like- I, that, that, I would have got no, that game. They didn't, they didn't play, it, play their cards the right way there. Oh, um, too bad. But yeah, and, and um, it's, I won't get into it. It's terrible. Uh, well, it, of course, but again, so but that begs the question, was this movie supposed to be geared towards children? I don't because- know. In the 80s, there weren't like a whole lot of adults sitting around playing video games. Yeah, there were some, but certainly not uh, enough to to market to directly. So, yeah, you would so have why to think have, it was. Right. So then why was this, if this movie was directed towards kids, they, wow. Wow. But again, hey, Johnny, it's the 80s. Have you ever seen anyone, a man naked in a locker <laughs> Sarah's room? Sarah's a grown man naked. It's the 80s. And, You're like movies about you know, gladiators? You, you could get away with things back then. You can't do that now. I guess, but you're not marketing an R-rated movie to, to kids, are you? I mean, even in the 80s. Well, yeah, you might have. They were, you know, loosey-goosey. I, I wouldn't have. Would you have? Um, I'm a lot of things, Crowley, so take that what it is. <laughs> you go with what, what you make your own decisions uh, uh, on what I would do. Sure. Go with it. Well, I... You would you're gonna wear a shirt with duck boobs on it, and I'm right there with you. So I think we're we're birds of a feather. Uh, <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> well, <laughs> we are gonna end the show on that. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long wind up. Um, <laughs> and any <swing> final miss? <laughs> yeah. Any final thoughts on <laughs> Howard the Duck before we wrap this up? I hope they bring him back on screen. Um. Uh, in a Marvel movie, somehow, yeah. some way. And I hope he's the one to beat Thanos. That would be great. I was just going to say, I hope he <laughs> saves the uh, the entire Marvel universe. That would be wonderful. But that's it. Yeah. That's all I got. That's probably not going to happen. I mean, if you're yeah. going to market Howard the Duck to kids, let's do it right. No, I mean, they, they keep saying Ant-Man is going to fly in his air and then just blow up and that'll be the end of it. But, you know. I think I no. saw that. I saw that in a cartoon of how the movie should have ended. Oh. Really? Yeah. Ma? Look at you. Ma? Look at that. Have, having the same thoughts as fans. Nah, look, Howard the Duck's yeah. a fun turn the brain off movie. Go watch it. There you go. All right. Ring an endorsement from all three of us. Great movie. Go see it. Enjoy it's it. It's better than, eh, it's not terrible. <laughs> it's it's better than, don't, it's better than this don't. podcast. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. And all right. It is better than, than Caravan of Garbage or Caravan of whatever the hell that was that we talked about earlier. <laughs> Caravan of Garbage. <laughs> All right, we'll end it here. Um, looking ahead, let's see, we've got one last show to do. And, and I won't be on that. 
because yeah, I'm going to we'll, be fired. Uh, it's going to be a surprise, folks, whether or not these guys are back. But we're uh, we're going to be talking about Kroll uh, from 1983. Uh, we've got the Alan Parsons Project, which is not something I enjoy. Oh, wait, yep. what? Yeah, no, I can't wow. get into them. I'll explain wow. later. Uh, Highlander 2, which is okay. I wasn't really the biggest Highlander fan. We'll talk a little bit of Steven Spielberg because he's somebody what? that will uh, come up from time to time throughout the novel. Um, so we won't get too much into it. Um, and then we will talk about Legend, uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, we'll talk about Revenge of the Jedi. And we'll hit Greyhawk. I th- Sword Quest series. That's how you said uh, Last which- Jedi there for a second. I got no, no, Revenge of the Jedi. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the Sword Quest series, and then we'll end it on Spaced, which was a um, British uh, TV comedy uh, show. So, any final questions before I close this sucker out, or any questions, any final comments before I close this thing out, Mike or Crowley? Where can I find uh, oh, Play Duck? Why do you love terrible things from the 80s and hate good things <laughs> from the 80s? <laughs> You'll have to listen to every episode of this show to fully understand why. So in 30 why? years, you will get your answer, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be long dead before you understand me. His sons so. will in, in, will carry the show on when he's long dead. That's how long this, and that'll only be chapter five. <laughs> okay. um, that's right. right. Well, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. If you guys uh, are liking what you hear, then... That's surprising, um, but certainly visit us on Instagram at the basement uh, at the basement RPO. You can find us on Twitter at the basement RPO, Facebook forward slash the basement RPO. Uh, Vero is just the basement. I think I still don't understand that stupid app. Um, we've got a Patreon page up. We've got a T Public page up. Uh, please leave us some reviews if you'd like to on iTunes. Uh, if they're positive, if they're negative, just keep them to yourself. Don't want to hear it. And with that, I think we'll. We'll end the show here. Um, we'll be back in about two weeks to kind of cover what we did. And we will uh, try to not talk about Star Wars next episode. So uh, with that, we'll end it. Thank you guys for joining us. And we will see you all on the next show. The views and opinions of the basement hosts are of our own and are not in any way affiliated with Random House or Ernest Klein. All quotes, music, sounds, trademark, and copyrighted material referenced in the show are owned by the respectful companies and creators and are used by the basement as fair use for entertainment purposes only. It would take me a month to read this whole disclaimer, but sad to say, I don't have that kind of time.